In this lesson, we are going to implement checkout wizard. When users select a product and add it to cart and click on proceed to checkout, and when user click on register or sign in, will be redirected to the checkout wizard like this. As you see, the sign in part is done and we are in the shipping part. And by entering user address and click on continue, will be redirected to payments method selection and then click on continue. What we are going to do in this lesson is to implement shipping and payments part of checkout wizard and also at the very beginning of processing this shopping cart, we check if user signed in or not and uh, you know show the relevant uh, screen for user sign in before going to shipping and payment state and when user click on continue will be redirected to place order a screen that's the topic of next lesson great let's go and implement checkout wizard get to code and here is the plan to implement this feature first of all we need to implement checkout steps go to explorer inside component folder right click new file and set file name to checkout steps inside that like other component define checkout steps and there should be a render function here render it accept props to show the steps based on the props we are going to return a div and the class of this step is checkout dash steps let's press enter here and press tab to create the first step in the checkout it's sign in dev set class to dollar sign here i'm going to read props.step1 props.step1 if it's true what i'm gonna return is active otherwise return empty as a class name and close the curry braces and the name of it is sign in. Close the diff. Okay, we have next three steps. Let's duplicate this one. And the next step is shipping, payment. And the last one is place order. Change a step to two, three, and four. Great, we just created checkout steps. Let's export that like this. Let's go back to plan. We have done the step one and step two. It's time to create redirect user in util.js. When you add a product to the cart and click on proceed to checkout, you will be redirected to sign in a screen. But if you click on sign in, you will be redirected to homepage. We're not gonna redirect user to homepage when there is an item in the shopping cart so we are going to define a redirect url and check that if user has an item in the shopping cart redirect user to the shipping screen to enter their shipping address let's implement this method in util.js inside frontend open util.js in the frontend folder frontend src folder and at the very end, export const redirect user. In this function, I just check cart item if get cart item dot length does not equal to zero. It means that user has an item in the shopping cart at least. Redirect user to shipping screen. Document dot location hash should be shipping otherwise redirect user to home page just duplicate this paste it here and make it like home page that's the redirect user i'm going to use this inside sign in screen and register screen go to sign in and instead of having simple redirecting to home page i'm going to redirect user based on the shopping cart 
let's press R again to import redirect user from util.js and also in the register screen do the same. After setting user info, call redirect user and import that right here. After updating redirect user, we need to use this in the render method. If getInfo.name exists, redirect user based on the shopping cart item and do the same in the sign in screen. In the render method, if user already sign in, redirect user. Let's check the result. If I select a product, add it to cart and click proceed to checkout, because I have an item at least in the shopping cart, I will be redirected to the shipping screen. Let's go to plan. And at this point, we just implemented redirect user and it's time to copy profile screen and save it as a shipping screen. Here it's time to implement the shipping screen to get shipping information from user. Let's go to Explorer and then duplicate profile screen because this form is very similar to each other and rename that to shipping screen. In the shipping screen, rename profile to shipping. And at the end, make it shipping screen and set the name of form to shipping form. Good. And it's time to work on the render method. Instead of getting get user info, I'm going to get shipping. And from get shipping, the information that I'm going to get is address, city, postal code, and the last one is country. In the rendered method, after checking user to make sure it's sign in, here I get shipping information. const address, city, postal code, and country equal to get shipping. We need to implement get shipping in the local storage. Copy this from here, paste it in the local storage like this, and go to local storage at the very end, define export const get shipping like this. Inside get shipping, define const shipping equal to local storage dot get item shipping. If it exists, use that inside JSON dot parse. JSON dot parse this. Otherwise, return default data. For city, it should be empty string, and also for other information address postal code and the last one is country get rid of the extra one and at the end i need to return shipping let's implement set shipping because we need that export const set shipping and the default parameter for address is empty a string like this Let's do that for city, postal code, and country, and then define the body of function right here. The body should be local storage that set item for shipping. And the second parameter is JSON that stringify address, city, postal code, and the last one is country that's the function for set shipping great let's go to shipping screen at this point first of all i'm going to make sure that get shipping works perfect put g and press tab to get rid of error here and here is the information that i'm getting from local storage to show them in the screen before form container i'm going to use check out steps that I already created in the very beginning of this lesson. Use it like this, dollar sign curly braces, 
check out the steps, it's gonna import automatically. Dot render. And for render, set a step one and a step two to true. A step one means that the sign in lamp should be turned on. And a step two is for the shipping, which is the current state. Set title of four to shipping. And there is no need to email and password here. Get rid of them and duplicate the name li for city postal code. And the last one should be country. Let's rename them address address for city city sorry it should be text all of them is text and the next one is for postal code name id value postal code and the last one is for country use it for name id and value country nice and name of button is con T new and there is no need to have sign in button let's go for saving this information in the local storage go up and inside the after render get rid of sign out button and inside the submit there is no need to have show loading here and the error section get rid of them and here we just set document that get elements by id shopping form and there is a typo in the form name here and then it's time to implement submit shopping form first of all call e.prevent default i'm not gonna refresh this page when user click on continue and after that call set shipping to import that right here and pass address equal to we are going to read the content inside the input box for address it should be document dot get element by id address dot value put a comma and duplicate three times for city postal code and country copy this from here paste it in the get element by id part great we just save the information and after saving we need to redirect user to the payment screen it should be like this document dot location dot hash equal to slash payment get rid of extra import here that we do not need them anymore and there is no need to have email here after removing extra imports it's time to add shopping screen to index.js as a new road open index.js and add shipping shipping screen press tab on the blue one to import shipping screen like this let's check the results select the product add to cart proceed to checkout uh-huh you just redirected to the shipping screen we need to add a style to them to check out the steps to make them like this. Let's go for it. Go to code and open style.css. At the very end, create a section for checkout. And what I'm going to do is define checkout steps. Dot checkout steps. Set display to flex to put items next to each other set justify content to space between and set a maximum width let's say 40 rem and create a margin around them and to put them in the center one rem auto for items inside dev check out the steps direct dev create a border above them border top should be 0.3 rem and the color by default is gray and solid set their color to let's say c0 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 it's gonna be gray too and set flex to 1 1 to put them in the equal width next to each other and create a padding from top like 1 rem what if that step is active check out the steps dev.active 
We are going to change the border color and the color. Set color to something orange. F0, 8000, and border top color to like this. In the checkout steps, we need to close the parent dev and create indentation in the checkout steps. Also, there is a typo in the name of steps. Let's rename that to correct name. And in the shipping screen, yeah, it just fixed. Let's check the result. Yes, that's it. And it is exactly like the final one. Select the product, click add to cart, click proceed to checkout. Oops, all of them are undefined. Let's fix this issue. Here I set item. Aha, uh -huh. I need to, in the json.stringify, I need to create a curly braces around them to fix this error. Let's test again. This time I'm going to enter correct information like this and click on continue. Let's refresh and go again. You see, this time it just work. Let's go for the payment one. When you click on continue in the shipping, you will be redirected to the payment. Payment is very similar to the shipping. So what I'm gonna do is to duplicate shipping, rename that to payment screen. Payment screen dot js. And inside that rename shipping like this and keep it active match case and change it to payment and for seven item replace then go to local storage and for get shipping and set shipping you need to duplicate both of them get shipping should be get payment it should be payment and this is payment two and for set shipping it should be set payment payment like this but their fields are different let's go for them here the only thing we have in the get payment is payment method and the default one is paypal also for the save one i just set payment method and the default to paypal and here i just pass payment method great i just created get payment and set payment let's go back to payment screen and press t here to import them correctly and there shouldn't be shopping form here it should be payment form right here and this one is payment form 2 in the render function let's fix the shipping screen it's not shopping form it's shipping form and fix that also in the after render get element by id shipping let's go back to payment form and at this point i'm going to save the payment information but there is only one information here and it is payment method what i'm gonna do here is to get rid of all of them because they are about shipping a screen and then at this point i want to update the render method in the render method i'm not gonna get any information at this point and for checkout wizard set step three to true because we are going to you know enable payment box and then get rid of all fields get rid of all fields and just keep the continue and here it's time to define a radio button create a lie inside that create a dev inside inside dev create input and set the type of input to radio set name of it to payment method and id to paypal id and value to capital paypal and it's checked by default 
because it's the default one. Then create a label and set label for PayPal and close that label. You can define other options just and close the li. Let's keep the indentation. Perfect. At closing div. And here is the closing li. Uh huh. You can duplicate this to add more options. Let's add a stripe to stripe, stripe, a stripe. And in the after render, in the set payment, get rid of all fields here and use this code to read the value of payment method. const payment method equal to document dot. I'm going to use query selector here. Query selector input that its name is payment method and it's checked that's the code to get the payment method and i'm going to get the value of it use payment method inside set payments if everything is okay redirect user to place order a screen and there is no need to have get payment at this point good let's check the result click home page select the product add to cart, proceed to checkout, and click on continue. We need to add payment to the routes in the index.js. Let's go to the index.js and add a slash payment, payment, a screen, payment, a screen, and import payment screen in the index.js. Let's check the results. Select a product, add to cart, proceed to checkout, and click on continue. You see, it will be redirected to payment screen. But the thing is, we need to show PayPal and Stripe here. Let's go to payment screen. And here, I'm going to get rid of checked for a Stripe. And in the label, put a Stripe. And here, in the label, put PayPal. That's it. You see, you can select PayPal or Stripe. And the only difference with the you know, final one is the position of payment vertically. Let's fix that and keep them at the very top. Go to style.css and search for form container. Set align items to flex start. And you see, it just stick to top. Good. What we did in, in this session is to create checkout wizard. When you select a product, add it to cart and proceed to checkout, we implemented a checkout indicator like this, checkout wizard indicator, and we just save the shipping information. You direct user to payment one, user can select payment method, and redirect user to the place order. In the next session, we are going to implement place order page like this. Until that lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to implement place order. When user select a product and add that product to the cart and click on proceed to checkout, we just implemented shipping part, payment part, and it's time to implement this screen. In this lesson, we will focus on the UI of this screen. And for the next lesson, we implement place order button action. Great. Let's go to code. Click here. Add a new screen. Set the name to place order screen.js. Inside this screen, we are going to create a screen object. Const place order screen equal to after render and render after render empty body and render don't forget to put fat arrow because they are methods good at this point we are going to define convert cart to order because what we're gonna show at this step is not cart it's a preview of the order we are going to place let's define this function convert cart to order 
above this function define const convert cat to order inside the body of this function first of all i am going to get cat items from local storage and save that in order items order items equal to get cart item and we need to import get cart items from local storage import that import get cart item from local storage if you click on it you will be redirected to local storage.js why do i need order items because I want to convert that to an ordered object. At this point, I want to check the order items length. If order items dot length equal to zero, it means that there is no order to place. I need to redirect user to the cart screen. Document dot location dot hash should be cart otherwise i need to get shipping info const shipping from local storage get shipping info press tab to import that if shipping information doesn't exist we need to redirect user to the shipping information to fill shipping address if doesn't exist shipping dot address i need to redirect to shipping screen let's check the payment const payment equal to get payment get payment should comes from local storage if payment dot payment method doesn't exist payment dot payment method doesn't exist redirect user to payment page document dot location dot hash should be payment page so at this point i have order items shipping address and payment method it's time to create an object which can be converted to a real order in the backend but first of all i need to calculate items price you know subtotal shipping price tax price and the total let's implement them first of all sum of items price const items price equal to here i'm going to use order items dot reduce order items dot reduce reduce accept accumulator and current item and a plus c dot price multiply by c dot qty and the default value for accumulator is zero good let's calculate shipping price const shipping price uh, here i'm using a simple algorithm if items price is greater than 100 set shipping price to zero otherwise set it to ten dollar for tax price it should be math at round because i'm not gonna show a lots of you know flout point numbers decimal point numbers because i'm not gonna show a bunch of numbers after decimal point i'm going to use math.round to round that in two decimal points 50 percent multiply by item price multiply by 100 and then divide that by 100 that's it so we just calculated them and it's time to calculate the total price const total price equal to sum of items price plus shipping price plus task price and here is items price good let's return this object return first of all cart items then shipping information and then payment information and at the end there are prices items price shipping price tax price and total price for the first one it's order items not cart items because 
at the very beginning, we just define get card items inside order items. Here is convert card to order, and it's time to use that in the render function. Let's scroll down, go to render function right here, press enter and define const and copy this and paste it right here equal to convert card to number good and at the end we are going to export place order screen export default place order screen in the render function after getting information about this order it's time to show them to the user return put a backtick icon and press enter first of all create a div and inside that render checkout steps checkout steps dot render and pass all steps to true step one true two step four two three and four it's time to import checkout steps scroll up import checkout steps from component folder component checkout steps after importing checkout steps let's continue render function in the return section after creating dev it's time to create another dev inside the parent dev and set the class of this dev to order inside order create another class and set it to order info class order info inside order info we are going to show we are going to create inside order info let's create another dev and inside this dev put h2 shipping and close that create a dev and show shipping information right here like this shipping address put a comma shipping city comma shipping postal code and shipping country press enter here to to have it in a new line remove the last comma and close that diff and close parent diff and we are good to go for the next diff the next step is for payments h2 payments close it create a dev for payment method and show that from payment dot payment method close this dev and also set indentation to close parent dev the next dev is for cart items dev inside this dev create a ul and the class of ul should be cart list container create first ally and inside that put h2 shopping cart close that create a dev set it to price and close that and after this ally it's time to use order items dot map to show all items in the place order screen dollar sign f order items dot length equal to zero order items dot map inside map function we are going to map each item in this array to li's inside backtick li inside li create a div and set class of div to cart image create image set src to item dot image and alt should be dollar sign curry braces item dot name and close it and close the image and close the div and it's time to create a div for cart item div class cart item inside that create a div create anchor set href to slash sharp slash product slash and the id item product and show the name of item there dollar sign item dot name and close the anchor close the div and create another div for quantity div qty and here it's just a label cannot be changed the quantity dollar sign item dot qty 
and close the div. After that, we can close the cart screen dev here and create another dev. Dev set class of this dev cart price, cart price, and show a dollar for because it's a price and another dollar because we are going to use JavaScript object item dot price and close this div and also close li and here it's time to close ul and after closing ul close the parent div and the parent of that div like this and create another div for order action order action here is the place for order action like this I'm going to implement that after checking the results. Close this div and close the parent div. If you check this one, it's the, yeah, the top level div. After closing this, it's time to check the result. What I'm gonna do at this point is to go to index.js and add place order screen. Click here, open index.js, add place order screen slash place order equal to place order screen and it's gonna be import right here let's check the result as you see shipping address payment address and shopping cart before adding a style i'm going to fill the order action part i mean this part the order summary part let's add the html content for this and then go for styling all of this stuff go to place order screen and scroll down in the order action section get rid of order action and follow me to create order summary ul li h2 order summary close h2 and and close li create another li for items dev items close dev another dev dollar sign dollar sign item price and close that dev and close li Duplicate this for shipping task and the total price. Shipping tax and order total. Change it to total price. Change this to tax price, tax price. And change this one to shipping price. And at the end, create an ally for place order button. Button place order and close the button don't forget the class of button should be primary primary and full width aha uh -huh. you see at the end i have order summary item shipping tax order total and the place order we have done adding html element and it's time to styling those element to make them like this let's go for them open your style.css scroll down Create a section for order. For order class, set display flex and flex wrap wrap. We're gonna make it responsive. Create a small padding and set justify content to space between. Here is the result. We just created two columns for us. Let's continue styling. For order info class, set flex 3160 rem and for order action order action set flex to 1 1 20 rem here is the result you see the way we are going to split width of this screen between information and action let's continue styling for order info and for for all h2 inside order dot order h2 set margin to zero and font size to 2.2 rem the next style or cart list container inside order like this i'm gonna set padding to zero for the order info devs order info class direct dev what i'm gonna do for direct dev is creating a border and border radius border 0.1 rem and the color is gray and the style is solid create a border radius to half a rem and create a very small background color cfcfc don't forget add a padding 
and add a margin here in the adding border it should be 0 0.1 rem and let's check the result aha uh -huh. it should be like this for h2 let's add a very small padding button for h2 padding padding button one rem aha uh -huh. it's much better and similar to this one and let's continue adding style for order action what i'm gonna do is to add border to 0.1 rem gray color solid create border radius 0.5 rem and create a background color fc 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 and create a padding 1 rem check the result the next move should be removing padding and bullet point let's do that dot order action ul inside that set padding to zero and get rid of bullet point by this line after that it's time to put price and the value next to each other order action li's set display flex set justify content space between and create a margin button one rem and here is the result let's go for the order total in the order action dot total li i'm going to set font size to rem a bigger a bit bigger font weight to bold and color to like this and use save this use dot total inside place order screen and for the order total set it for this class aha uh -huh. order total is gonna be in different color and font size great there is a typo in the order item dot map inside place order screen uh, here after cart image it should be cart name and there we go here is very similar to this one okay let's review what we did in this lesson first of all we created place order screen to create a screen like this and then we defined place convert cart to order it just get all information that user entered during checkout wizard to an object like this that contains order items shipping info payment info and also item price shipping price tax price and total one and then in the render function we show them like this two columns the first one to show information about the cart and the second one is order summary that has a place order button and user can click on it to convert this shopping cart to a real order in the back end in the next lesson we are going to go for implementing place order and create an order in the back end before finishing this lesson what i'm gonna do is to set the margin top of this one and make them in the same line in the style.css at the very end for the first child of order info order info dev first child set margin top to zero and there we go they are in the same line the shipping and the order summary that's it for this lesson until next lesson bye bye in the previous lesson we just created place order screen and it's time to implement place order action when user click on place order we just create a new order at this address slash order slash id of that order and make it possible for user to finish the payment what we're gonna do in this lesson is focusing on creating an order here is the last state of e-commerce website when i click on place order nothing happens let's make it work go to code and here is the plan first step we need to handle place order button click let's go for it open place order a screen and then scroll down for the button place order and set id to place order dash button a scroll up in the after render of place order screen press enter there and first of all let's get 
order from convert cart to order function const order convert order to function at this point i'm going to send an ajax request so first of all i need to call show loading and then const data equal to await create order and the parameter that i'm going to pass is order after that hide loading we need to import them from util.js import show loading and hide loading from util.js here we are using await so the after render should be async and i need to create create order function in the api and here is the data if data.error exists i need to show a message show message data.error and we need to import that by pressing on this otherwise at this point i need to clear the cart i need to clean the cart because all items in the shopping cart converted to a real order and user should be able to add new items to the cart so cart need to be empty clean cart and we need to implement that in the local storage and after that redirect user to its order page document.location.hash should be slash order slash the idea of order and the idea of order comes from data dot order dot underline id if i press save it's gonna get converted to the template literal like this what i need to do in the front end part is to implement create order function in api and clean cart in local storage let us start with the easy one go to local storage right here and at the very end of the screen export const clean cart it's a function that remove cart items local storage dot remove item cart items export great so i can use that inside place order in the local storage put a comma and enter clean cart so in the place order after render there shouldn't be any error here and the last thing for the front end implementing create order let's go to api in the explorer go to rc folder double click api and here it's time to create an api for building an order it is very similar to register user in terms of creating a new item but this i this time the item is a new order so let's do that export const create order it just accept order information and it's an async function inside this function first of all we need to get the token const token equal to get user info and then it's time to send an axios request const data equal to axios and inside the option section set url equal to backtick dollar sign api url slash api slash order and headers the header section should contain contain type equal to application json and the most important one authorization equal to barrier equal to token inside backtick icon good let's pass the data and the data is the order itself let's wrap it in try catch try and move this code inside the try part and the catch part if there is an error just return error equal to error dot response dot data dot message if it doesn't exist use the default error great at this point when i get the data sorry it's response when i get the response 
I need to check response dot status text doesn't equal to OK. If there is an error, I need to throw new error and the error message should be response dot data dot message. Otherwise, return response dot data like this. Return. Great. We just implemented the create order and in the place order, if I get rid of last character and select this one, it's gonna get imported right here. And the last change in the API before showing error.response.data.message, we need to check error.response exists or not. Let's wrap them inside this. If it exists, then this otherwise error dot message and we can get rid of this so i just change the return error to this code in the place order screen and in the after render i need to put this code inside event listener for click on place order button document dot get element by id place order button dot add event listener the type of event is click and the responder is like is like this inside the responder section i'm going to move all code from here for placing order to the click and set it to async inside api the address is API slash orders put method to post. That's the last fix for create order in a front end. Let's check that. Here I click on place order. I get the error message. And here I'm sending post request to this address and I want to get a new order, but I'm getting 404 error. So it's time to go and implement this route. Go to VS Code and it's time to work on the backend part. Open your backend. Uh, because we are going to create a new order, first of all, we need to build a model for order, a Mongo's model. Right click, new file in the model folder and set it to order model.js. Inside this file, we are going to create an model. First of all, import mongoose from mongoose, then define order schema, const order schema equal to new mongoose schema. And here we are going to pass the properties of this order. Also put a comma and create another object as a second parameter of order schema and set timestamps to true. By having this setting, when you create an order, the time of creation will be saved. And when there is an update, the update time will be updated. So let's add the properties and columns for this model. The first one is order items. Order items, it's an array and each item of this array contain this value. The name of product type is a string and required is true and required is true. I just duplicate this for image price QTY and change price and QTY to number. The next one is product and the type of product is mongoose.schema dot types dot object id here is the type of product mongoose and here the reference of this entity is product and the required is true great i just defined the properties of order item and this one is like a foreign key that give us access to the properties of the real product that we are going to have in the order item. Good. For next property, it should be user itself. After order item, user. User 
is gonna be very similar to product. It's like a foreign key, mongoose dot schema dot types dot object id, and the reference here is capital user, and required is true. It's for you know it's the user that placed this order. The other information for order shipping and payment. Let us start with shipping. Shipping is an object contains address of type string and I just duplicate that for city, postal code and country. Let's go for payment. Payment contain two section. The payment method of type string and payment result. It's a object that contains order ID, payer ID and payment ID. Order ID of type string, payer ID a string, and payment ID a string too. After payment, it's time to enter information about the price. Items price number, tax price number, shipping price number, and total price number two. And here it's time to set a flag for is paid and is delivered is paid is is paid its type is boolean and required is true and default is false because by default all orders are unpaid and paid at its of type date the next one is for delivered i just duplicate this and rename that to is delivered and delivered at to save the deliver time and status. Great, let's use this order schema to create an order model. const order equal to mongoose.model order is the name of collection in the database and order schema. At the end, export default order. That's it, we just created order model definition in the order model.js, it's time to go to router and create new file for order router.js. Here I need to import express from express and create an instance of router and set the name to order router equal to express.router. And at the end, we need to export default order router at this line i want to create a route for building or creating an order order router dot post it's a post request what's the address it's the, the root of the address is gonna be a slash api slash orders and only authenticated user is off can have access to this route and rec and res let's import is off sorry there is a typo here it should be express from express not expect and we need to import is off and we need to import is off from util like this and then inside the body of this function i'm going to create a new order let's wrap it inside express async handler the whole function and I need to import express async handler from express async handler and in the body of this function which is an async function I want to create an order const order equal to new capital order press tab for capital order to import it from order model and pass all information about this order including order items all of them comes from that comes from order.body.order item that comes from the body rec.body.order items for user we are going to get the user from rec.user because when is off middleware runs rec.user will be filled by the date of current user and I just want to have the ID of that user. For other information about this, I want to get them from body like this. Let's duplicate them for payment. 
items items price tax price shipping price and total price like this and get rid of the last one great i just created a new instance of that order and it's time to save that const created order equal to await order dot save i'm going to send back the result res dot send res dot status set a status to 201 201 is the code for creating new resource and send message should be new order created and the data is created order that's it and the last step is gonna be using order router in the server.js open open server.js and right after user router create a route for slash api slash orders and the responder is order router press tab to import order router at the very top of server.js to fix this issue what we can do is to convert the id of product from one to a valid id for mongoose instead of one you can make it 24 one one two three four five six and make it duplicate one two three and make for two like this one two three four five six and duplicate go to home page and then click your cookie for localhost and select the first product the id should be 24 one click add to cart click proceed to check out login enter your information continue select paypal and place order this time the order created for the front end part in the api and in the create order for axios because it's a async function put await here so when you click on place order you get this message new order created and if you check the xhr you can see the order created and here is all information about the new order great we just created a new order and after setting a wait because the return code is 201 the status text is gonna be created so if it's not equal to created it means that i need to return an error otherwise i return the data in the return part i am going to response.data and the last change after setting this to created is in the order router and when i'm sending 201 as a response i am going to set order to created order not data by having this change if i add a new product add to cart check out enter address commit and place order i will be redirected to the order screen with this id and this page is not found i need to implement this page in next lesson so let's review what we did in this lesson here is the changes first of all i changed the id of first product from 1 to 24 1 and the reason is when i want to save this inside mongodb the format of id should be 24 hexadecimal number and that's why i just changed it to this for next lesson when we create the real product this issue will be fixed automatically another change is in server.js i just imported order router here and set slash api slash order for order router next one was creating order schema based on order items the user that sent place that order shipping and payment information and also the status of it and i just exported the model object the next change was in the order router creating a route for making a new order into the database the other changes are for front end in a front end in the api js i created create order to send order ajax request to the backend and also in the local storage i defined a method to clean cart items 
And the last one is in the place order to add an event to place order button right here. And there I just call create order to build an order for user. That's it for this lesson. Until next lesson. Bye. In this lesson, we are going to implement order details screen. When you as a customer select a product and add it to cart and press it to checkout, after place an order, you will be redirected to the order screen. In this lesson, we are going to implement this order screen and also the PayPal checkout will be the topic of next lesson. So let's implement this page, go to code and in the front end folder SRC screen, you are going to create order screen. I'm not gonna make that from scratch and it's much better to duplicate place order screen because in term of UI, they are very close to each other, order details and place order. Rename that to order screen. I need to update this to show details of any given order. First of all, get rid of local storage import because we do not need them anymore and also get rid of convert cart to order. We don't need that too. In the render function, get rid of convert cart to order. And here it's time to get request information, const request parse request URL. And based on request.id, which is gonna be the ID of current order, I want to get all information about this order. So I need to send an Ajax request to the server. Const order equal to await get order based on request.id. We need to make render as a sync. Great, by having order, I can use the constructing assignment to get shipping payment and other info. Double click on it and put a pair of curly braces and inside that put shipping, payment, order items, items price, shipping price, tax price, and total price. Let's check. Great, we have all information that we need at this point. Also, there is no need to place order because it's gonna show the description and information about this order. So it's time to implement get order. Open API in front and SRC and at the very end, export const get order. It's an async function that accept an ID and inside that we are going to send a request to server to get information about this order. First of all, get the token because we are going to send, we are going to send an authorized, authorized request. Const token, get it from local storage, get user token info. And then it's time to create a request const data equal to await axios set the parameter url is gonna be api url slash api slash orders slash id of orders is gonna be dollar sign curry braces id second parameter is headers and for headers, first of all, set content type to application JSON and set authorization to barrier token inside backtick. There is no need to send any data for this request. And after sending that, it's time to check the result. First of all, wrap the whole code inside try catch, move this code inside try part, and the catch should check the error. 
if there is an error return error equal to error dot message good it should be response not data response and after getting response if response dot status text doesn't equal to okay i need to throw an error through new error and the error message is gonna be response.data.message otherwise return data response.data good in the order screen i need to import get order like this you know at the very top i have get order from api and also there is no need to have this code in the after render we can get rid of unused items good so the order screen at this point is gonna be like this and there is no need to have checkout render get rid of it and the only thing we need to show here is h1 and this h1 should show order and here the id of that order order dot id and close h1 because we do not have order dot i need to get rid of it and here use the id with the syntax also get rid of checkout steps component we do not need that anymore and it's time to introduce order screen to index.js open index.js in the route section what i'm gonna do is to duplicate product column id and change it order column id and order screen in the order screen rename place order screen to order screen copy that go to at the very end and replace that and in the index.js import that import order screen from dot slash screen slash order screen let's check the result when i select the product add it to cart and follow the instruction to place an order you see i get this error it says slash api slash order and the id of order 404 error it doesn't found implement this api select router folder and open order router before post set router dot get we are going to send the get request colon slash colon id and here i'm going to use is auth because it's an authenticated api and inside that and for responder use express async handler and inside that define rec and res as a function at this point i'm going to get information about this request by the order id const order equal to await order dot find by id rec dot params dot id here i'm using await so this function should be async after getting order i need to check order if it exists that's okay rest.send that order otherwise i need to send 404 rest.status 404.send message order not found here the router is order router great let's check the result refresh and this time as you see I'm getting the data about this order. I want to add the state of shipping and the state of payment right here. Let's do that. Go to order screen and next to shipping. Here I'm going to check is delivered. Dollar sign carry braces is delivered. Render this one, a dev with class success. And inside that show this message delivered at dollar sign delivered at and close that otherwise create a dev set class to 
error and the message should be not delivered and close that we need to extract is delivered and delivered at right here is delivered and delivered at and same rules apply to payment right after payment method put this and change that to paid and not paid is paid and paid at copy this and move it to get order and copy paid at and paste it right here great let's check the result aha uh -huh. you see here is the shipping info and here is the payment info and what i'm gonna do is to create a space for the dev right here open style.css and for order info dev and dev you know the second level dev set padding to one rem aha uh -huh. very close to this one as you see we just implemented the order details screen before finishing this lesson let's fix a typo error in order router.js in the backend for post method to create a new order in this line tax price there is extra t here get rid of it and save it to make sure you do not see undefined anymore you can go to homepage, click add to cart proceed to checkout and place order as you see this time you have tax here let's review what we did in this lesson first of all in the order router we defined a router for getting information about a, a specific order and then in the api part in the front end we define get order function to get data from backend and provide that for order screen and we just used those information sent back by order by backend and use that to show them in the order screen also in the index.js we define the order screen for this route slash order slash id of order and as a result when you click on an order it should be order slash the id of order and when you refresh this page you can see all details about this order that's it for this lesson and for next lesson we are going to implement paypal payment until that lesson bye -bye. in this lesson we are going to implement paypal checkout in our e-commerce website when user create an order, a button from PayPal checkout should be appear right after the order total. And when user click on it, user will be redirected to the PayPal screen like this. User can pay the price of order, you know, the order total by clicking on pay now. After successful payment, user should be redirected to the e-commerce website and the state of payment from not paid should be converted to the paid as you see a message like this payment was successfully show here and the message paid at this time and date is gonna be appeared and there is no pay button anymore because it's already paid let's go and implement adding paypal to the e-commerce website here is the plan first of all we need to get client id from paypal to get that follow the instruction at this address developer.paypal.com and what i'm gonna do is to follow this instruction to get a client id at the very first step you need to log in to developer.paypal.com uh, you need to create a user in the paypal and then create paypal developer account and also you need to have a paypal business account to be able to use paypal api after creating an account in paypal open this address developer.paypal.com slash developer slash application 
At this address, you have two modes. The first one, sandbox, it's just for test. And the second one is live. If you want to just test, keep sandbox. And if you want to create a live e-commerce website, click on live and then create app. Here we are going to test. I just keep sandbox and then click on create app. When you create an app, you need to set a name for your app. And for this app, a client ID will be generated. Set it to JS Amazona or whatever you like to set as a name of your e-commerce website. And here the sandbox business account and click on create app. After creating app, you will have a client ID and a secret. In this lesson, we're not gonna use secret and having client ID is enough. Select that, right click and copy. Then go to your VS code in the root folder, select .env and create a new line and enter PayPal client ID, put equal sign and paste it like this. This is the first step. Second step is gonna be creating a route for slash API slash PayPal slash client ID. Let's open backend folder server.js and right after order create a get method app.get slash API slash PayPal slash client ID. And here is the responder res.send. We are going to send back the client ID. Client ID equal to config dot paypal client id let's go to config.js and here add process.env.client id this client id is exactly what we have right here good we have done this step and it's time to go to front end and create get paypal client id in api.js close backend open frontend in the src open api.js at the very end create a method for get paypal client id export const get paypal client id it's async doesn't get any parameter and inside that we just send an Ajax request to get the ID. Const response await Axios. The parameter is gonna be API URL slash API slash PayPal slash client ID. Set headers for content type to application JSON. And there is no need to add any extra data. Check the response. If response that the status text doesn't equal to OK through an error, and the message is gonna be response that data that message. Otherwise, return response that data dot client ID. Nice. It's time to go to order screen.js and add PayPal checkout script. In the front end, src screen, open order screen, and the main code is gonna be right here. Let us start by defining a function to add PayPal script. Const add PayPal SDK equal to async inside this function first of all we need to get the client id const client id equal to await get paypal client id i need to import that from api we use client id to redirect user to the paypal website at this time I want to show loading, show loading and check if we already loaded 
PayPal or not? If window.paypal exists or not? If it doesn't exist, we need to load that. To load a script in a window, we need to create a, a script element and set its attribute and then append it to the document.body. Let's do that. const a script equal to document.create element a script set a script type to text javascript set a script source to paypal it's gonna be https colon slash slash www paypal objects dot com slash api slash checkout dot js the next line is for async set a script dot async to true and when this script load i am going to define a callback for loading a script a script dot unload equal to this function handle payment handle payment and pass client id to that we will implement handle payment later and at the end we need to append this script to the document.body document.body.append child a script that's it if we already included paypal script we just call handle payment handle payment and pass client id to that great let's implement handle payment after add paypal sdk const handle payment it's a function that accepts client id and inside this function i am going to call button dot render from paypal because i want to show a button in the screen let's do that window dot paypal dot capital b button render function render function accepts a bunch of settings the first setting is env environment we need to set it to sandbox or live i'm going to set it to sandbox like this second parameter is client and in the client we need to set for sandbox to the client id we already created and loaded in the front end and for production set it to empty because it's not gonna be for production at the moment after setting client we need to set the language locale locale it's gonna be en underline us and the next property is a style the button style make it responsive set size to responsive color to gold and shape to pale good we are going to enable pay now set commit to true and it comes to define two important callback events the first one is payment payment accept two parameter the data and the action actions inside this we need to return actions dot payment dot create here we are going to create a payment record and what's the information of this payment record for sure transactions is the first one transaction is an array and the first element of it is gonna be amount and for amount there are two values that we need to fill the first one is total and we're gonna get it from order dot total price and the second one is currency and we set it to usd 
we will fill order later. After defining the payment, it's time to define another function that will run after successful or failure payment. Unauthorize. Accept two parameter like payment, data and actions. And inside that, we're gonna return actions.payment.execute function and the promise of it is gonna be like this at this point the payment was successful i need to show loading and call pay order function call pay order we will implement that later and after that hide loading so at this moment we update the order record and set is paid to true and update the paid date and at the end show a message payment was payment was successful and set the callback inside show message to re-render order a screen because we're gonna update the state of yeah the order screen right here because we are gonna update the state of payments and the last setting for PayPal button render is the ID of dev we are going to show button there it's gonna be PayPal dash button after we render order screen we need to define the ID of dev that PayPal button should be rendered there. Put it exactly right here. Sharp PayPal dash button. And at the end, use then right here because it's a promise. And inside the promise, set height loading. We just implemented handle payment function and it's time to use add PayPal SDK inside order screen and inside the render after getting the order information here i'm going to check if is paid is false it means that if this order status is unpaid add paypal stk and i just pass total price at the very top of add PayPal SDK, scroll up. Here I'm going to get total price and pass total price to handle payment. Put a comma here and also here to pass it to handle payment. And also use that in the definition of handle payment and scroll down for the amount and get rid of order dot total payment is gonna come from add paypal stk and goes to handle payment let's check the results only keep the product with the id add it to cart proceed to checkout login enter shipping select paypal and click on place order you know a loading happens here and i am waiting to show a button let's check the error if it's six aha uh -huh. it says paypal button doesn't found we need to add paypal button in the render function let's go for it I scroll down in the order screen and inside the order summary section right after order total create an li and create a dev and set id of dev to paypal dash button close the dev and close li let's check again refresh aha uh -huh. this time paypal button appears here set class to full width so this time when i refresh you see paypal checkout appears here let's click on paypal button 
I will be redirected to the PayPal screen. Here it's the price of this order. Click on pay now and you will be redirected to the e-commerce website and it says payment was successful. If you refresh this page, not pay uh, doesn't change because we didn't implement it, the pay order. I mean, we didn't update the state of this order in the MongoDB database. Let's add this feature and by the end of this one, this lesson is going to be done. Great. Let's follow the instruction for creating pay order in the api.js. Open api.js and right after get PayPal client ID, export const pay order. It's an async function that get order ID and payment result. And inside that we send an Ajax request to server to inform the server that this order was paid. Const, first of all, get token because we are going to send an authorized request, get user info, const response, await Axios, set URL to API URL slash API slash orders a slash ID of this order dollar sign order ID and slash pay it's the verb very nice next parameter is headers set authorization to barrier token make it like backtick and set content type to application JSON, put a comma here, wrap it inside try catch, like this, and in the catch part, if there is an error, we need to show that error. It's very like to this one. Return error if error.response exists, use data.message, otherwise error.message. After getting response in the try section, we need to compare response.status text. If it's not equal to OK, there is an error. Through new error response.data.message, otherwise return response dot data don't forget we need to pass the payment result inside the axios right after header create data equal to payment result we need to pass the informa payment information to the server go to order screen and in the unauthorized section at this point, we need to call pay order. Get rid of it. Await pay order and press tab to import that. It accepts two parameters, order ID. To get order ID, I am going to use parse request URL dot ID and information about the payments. I'm going to use the data field of PayPal. Order ID equal to Data dot order ID. This ID is different from the one we have in our database. It's the order ID in the PayPal website. Payer ID equal to data dot payer ID. Payment ID is the last one. Data dot payment ID. It's time to go to server and implement pay. API open order router function order router and at the very end we're gonna define order pay order router this time I'm gonna use put because it's a put request it's gonna update the state of order and here is the path ID of order and pay action it's an authorized is 
auth should be here and use express async handler inside that rec and res. Let's get the information about this order. const order equal to await order dot find by id and the id comes from the rec dot params because it's await this function should be async after getting the order check if order exists set is paid to true and set paid at to current date date dot now and fail payment payment result like this payer id equal to rec dot body dot payer id and duplicate that for payment id and order id and after updating fields it's time to save const updated order equal to await order dot save and send back the data rest dot send message should be order paid and the updated order is gonna be like this if the order doesn't exist send status 404 and send message order not found let's go to the api in the front end and here in the axios set method to put why put because in the order router we set the order router to put for pay let's check the result click on pay now click pay now and we are going to get back to the our website this time the status should be updated as you see paid at this time and there is no paypal button anymore because uh, when you just paid there is no need to have paypal button if you refresh this page you can see payment payment method is paypal and the paid is green it means that it just paid successfully that's it for this lesson and uh, what we did in last lesson so far was to completing an order from the very beginning of creating a shopping cart to placing an order in the e-commerce website and pay that with PayPal. In the next lesson, we are going to focus on managing products and after that managing orders by admin of the website until that lesson bye bye we are going to create list of orders in the amazon if you click on your profile you will see a section right here that shows a list of your orders and it shows the status of paid delivered and total price also there is a details button that if you click on it you will be redirected to the details of your post your order and if it's unpaid you can pay that with paypal let's implement order history to do that start from backend and create api to return all orders by current user open your vs code and go to backend folder routers order router at the very top of this define a router to send all orders by current user order router get the route is gonna be a slash mine and only authenticated user can have access to this and inside express async handler we are going to define the handler for this api the command here is very simple const orders await order dot find and what's the condition here only order of current user user equal to rec dot user dot underline id we are using await so this function should be async after getting user it's time to return that res 
dot send orders that's it we just implemented the router to send back orders of current user let's go back to plan it's time to create a function in api.js in a front end to get access to the backend api open api at the very end and right after get order define get my orders export const get my orders equal to a sync inside this function first of all i need to get the token because i am going to send an authorized request get token from get user info from rocker storage and const response equal to await axios and here it's time to pass parameter the first one is the url and it should be api token and it should be api url slash api slash orders slash mine it's exactly like we have in the order router.js set headers and set content type to application slash json and we need to set authorization to barrier token let's wrap it inside try catch move this code inside try catch and create catch part for error and if there is an error send back that error i'm going to use the line of code right here to send back the error in the try part it's time to check response if response.status doesn't equal to ok through an error and set the error to response.data.message otherwise response a list of orders by returning response.data good we created the api for get my orders and it's time to show orders in the profile screen open profile screen and i'm going to divide this screen in two section the left section is for updating user profile and the right one is for showing order history at this point let's define a dev set class to profile create an inner dev set class to profile info it should be dev and create another dev next to that and it should be profile orders profile orders and here i'm going to show all orders let's close the parent dev and cut form container from here and paste it right into profile info in the profile order section we are going to have a table create a table set t head section for columns of an order the first one is order id i'm going to duplicate that for order date total price paid daily worth the last one should be actions close the tr table row and close the t head and create table body i'm going to close table body and also close the table itself inside table body we need to check order dot length dollar sign if order dot length equal to zero what i need to do is to show no order found tr inside backtick it should be inside backtick td set call span to six to cover all columns and say no order found otherwise put a column for otherwise if there is an order in the list we are going to use order dot map 
to convert order object to HTML object for each order inside orders. It should be orders for each order inside orders. Convert that put back tick. And here it's time to create table row table cell. The first column is for order ID dollar sign order dot underline ID and close the TD duplicate that and close the TR let's update the values here second field is for date created at third one is total price the next one is paid at and the other one is delivered at and the last one is action for action I'm going to show a link let's create a link here set href to slash sharp slash order slash dollar sign order dot underline id and set the caption of this link to the tails close the anchor good it's time to load orders at the very top in the render function after getting this information it's time to define const orders equal to await and i'm going to use the order that i just defined in api get my order press tab to import that and convert the render function to async at this point i'm getting the order in the render method and then show them in the screen let's check the result click on your name to show the profile and as you see it's the order id date total paid and delivered is undefined and action for undefined i'm going to use this style if paid at is undefined use no if delivered as undefined set it no uh -huh. paid no delivered no let's add some style to this table first of all let's get rid of commas what i'm going to do is to add dot join slash n here to get rid of commas and it's time to move user profile to left and keep the order history to right and also right before them h2 order history aha uh -huh. there is a title for them let's go for splitting the screen open style.css and at the very end of the screen create a comment for profile and set dot profile class to flex display flex set flex wrap to wrap we're gonna make it responsive and set align items to flex start we're gonna to keep item in term of vertically at the top it's time to add a style to profile info and orders we have two columns here profile dash info occupy one one thirty rem and profile dash orders occupy three one sixty rem and it should be 20 rem because when uh, it's one is 20 three should be triple 20 which is gonna be 30 set justify content to space between uh-huh as you see the user profile border stick to the edge of the screen let's fix that in the profile screen at the very top of return set class content and profile content create padding around it uh-huh and also let's create a space between user profile and order story go to style and set margin left one rem that's okay we have order story here and it's time to add a style to the table at the very end set table width to a hundred percent table header set text align left t body table row only for odd child odd trs table rows 
set background color to gray and for td create a very slight background padding half or m let's check the result if you click on details you will be redirected to the details of that order let's click back and there we are we just created order history very similar to the final one let's review what we did in this lesson first of all we defined a route for showing list of current user order in the order router and then we use that in get my orders function in the api in the front end side and in the profile screen we just read get my orders function data and in the profile screen we get the data and put them in the orders variable and uh, created two columns and in the main column we show order history of this user that's it for this lesson for next lesson we are going to focus on the admin section of e-commerce website including admin products and admin orders until that lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to implement admin dashboard ui if you log in to the system as an admin I'm gonna let you know how to log in as an admin. If you go to your code, use a router in the backend, create admin route, and by entering the email and password, at this point, the sign-in part, you can log in as an admin. When you log in as an admin, we want to show a dashboard menu here. And when user click on it, a dashboard like this will be shown. In this lesson, we're not going to work on the charts and boxes here. Uh, we are going to put a menu right here, dashboard sidebar like this, and also the dashboard page without any content. Filling the content is the topic of next lesson. Let's go for them. Here is the plan. First of all, we need to update header.js and check if user is admin or not. If it's admin, we're gonna show a link for dashboard. Open header.js in the front end folder, src component, and there we go. In the get user info, as well as name, we're gonna get is admin. And right after cart, check is admin if it's true i'm gonna show a link for dashboard backtick link should point to slash dashboard and the, the title of this link is dashboard and close it if user is not admin render nothing empty string okay let's check the result i'm gonna run npm start on the backend and in a new terminal cine frontend npm start for frontend part uh -huh. at this point you can see i have dashboard right here let's make it like this create more space and change the font here to regular or normal instead of bold and then go for creating the dashboard sidebar open style.css and go up to get to header links yeah right here get rid of font weight bold and for brand set font weight to bold and also create a space like this padding right half a rem great very close to each other for brand you can set padding left to one rem aha uh -huh. great very close to this one and we are good to go for dashboard screen if you click on dashboard screen you see page not found let's fix that open your explorer and go to a screen and right click new file and set file name to dashboard screen inside dashboard screen we need to create a screen object const dashboard screen equal to 
after render and render. It's after render. And it's the render one. Here we're gonna return dashboard. Let's export dashboard screen like this and then go to index.js to add dashboard screen to the routes. Dashboard equal to dashboard screen. Press tab to import dashboard screen in index.js. This time it should show dashboard and we are good to go to implement a dashboard screen like this. First of all, we are going to implement a component and set the name of component to dashboard menu. It's gonna render only the left part of this screen, the menu you see here. Let's go for it. Inside component, right click new file and set file name to dashboard menu. And inside that, create a component, dashboard menu, and like always it's, it has a render method. What I'm gonna return in the dashboard menu is a div that contain a ul and inside that ul there are a bunch of links let's do that return backtick and press enter create a div and set class of this div to dashboard menu menu inside this div create a ul and this UL contain some LIs. The first LI contain a link and this link points to dashboard. Slash sharp slash dashboard. And the title should be dashboard two. Close the link and close the LI. If you check the final version, you see when I'm in dashboard, the dashboard menu is active or selected. When I click orders, the orders one is selected. So I need to check if I'm in dashboard screen, select this one and change the style of this. Let's do that. Class equal to dollar sign. Here I'm going to put a JavaScript expression props dot selected selected equal to dashboard then render selected otherwise render empty string i need to define props as a parameter for render method so if the dashboard menu is in the dashboard screen i just set dashboard menu as a selected let's close the ul Duplicate li for orders and products. Orders, products. Change this to product and change this one to orders and also change the link to order list. We're gonna implement that later. And product list. Let's export dashboard menu here. export the file dashboard and we are done with the dashboard menu let's go to dashboard screen and here i'm going to use dashboard menu but before using dashboard menu i'm going to define a container dev and set the class name to dashboard let's get rid of dashboard string here create template literal define a dev and set the class of that dev to dashboard Inside dashboard, I'm going to define the sidebar and the sidebar is dashboard menu component. Let's render it here. Dollar sign. Dashboard menu, press tab to import dashboard menu and call render function. But this time the parameter 
should be this object. Selected menu is dashboard. That's it for rendering the menu part. It's time to render the content of dashboard. Create a div, set class of this div to dashboard content and create h1, set it to dashboard. And here it's time to enter information and chart. Info and charts will be added here. Close it, close this div, and close the dashboard div. Great, let's check the result. As you see here, I have menus, and I have dashboard and info and chart will be added here. I'm going to convert this simple style to this one. Let's go and add some style to dashboard. Open your style.css, scroll down at the very end, and right here, create a comment for dashboard. The first class that I'm going to add is dashboard itself. Uh, I'm going to put sidebar and content next to each other. Let's set display flex and make it responsive flex wrap to wrap. Display flex, flex wrap to wrap and make height full height like this. Also set heading one a bit smaller and create a margin around and fix the extra margin of it. Dashboard H1, font size to three rim and set margin for top and bottom one rim and left and right zero. After setting H1, Let's go to dashboard screen. And at this point, what I need to do is to go to render method of dashboard menu. And here, if you check, I just created a div here, but I didn't close it. Let's close that. And then let's go to dashboard screen and check the results. Uh -huh. And then let's go to dashboard screen. And here I'm checking the result, as you see, this time, menus and contents are next to each other. Let's go add some style to the menu. Open style.css again, and right after h1, it's time to add style to menu. Dot dashboard menu set flex 120 rem and create a very slight gray background color f0, f0, f0. Also, there is no need to have padding for UL inside dashboard menu. Set dashboard menu UL padding to zero. And I'm gonna set anchor inside dashboard menu full width. Dashboard menu anchors display flex. Create a padding around them, one rem, and make padding from left a bit bigger and set justify content to space between. Let's add other style for dashboard and then go for dashboard content. For dashboard menu anchors, when hovers happens, background color should change. Make it a bit darker, C0, C0, C0. And if the LI is selected, I need to change the background color of anchor and also the color. Dashboard menu. If li inside that is selected for anchor set background color to darker and set color of link to orange. F0, H0, 40 to C0, 4, 0, 4, 0. Make it, you know, a different color. Make it as a selected item color. Okay, it's time to set the class for dashboard content. Dashboard content, let's make the flex to 4, 1, 80 rem. And by having this, let's check the result. Aha, uh -huh. this time, as you see, it's very similar to this one and set the color to 
F0840. And also, and it's time to set the dashboard content class. Dashboard content set flex to four times its width should be greater than dashboard menu for 180 rem. That's it. And also create a padding like one rem. Aha, uh -huh. you know, it just create a space between dashboard and this. We just created the admin dashboard like this. And if you check that with the final one right here, you can see that they are too close to each other. And in next lesson, we implement the boxes and charts right here. Okay, let's review what we did in this lesson. First of all, in the index.js, we added a new screen and set it to dashboard screen. And then we created a component to show menus inside the sidebar of dashboard screen. Also in the header, we check is admin property of user information. And if it's true, and at the end, we create a dashboard screen that create a dashboard template, including a menu section in the left and a content section in the right. For next lesson, we are going to use this dashboard template to create admin product page. Until that lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to implement admin products UI. At the end of this lesson, when you click on the products, you will see a list of products right here and a edit and delete button next to each row and also a create button like this and the title. The creation of product and also editing them is gonna be topic of next lessons. But in this lesson, we're just focusing on building the UI. Let's go for them. First of all, in the screen folder, create product list a screen right click new file product list a screen.js inside that define render and after render this one is after render and this one is render and at the end export that let's return product list screen text and then go to index.js to add this screen to the routes right here product list comma product list a screen and press tab let's check the result here click on dashboard click on products and there we go we are in the product list screen we are going to make this screen like this one let's go for it first of all i'm going to copy the content of dashboard screen because they are very similar to each other and paste it inside backtick literal right here let's import dashboard menu press tab to import it and here is the place to create list of products first of all create a button for add new product button set id of button to create product button and set the class to primary that's it the title of this button should be create product and close it. Good. The next step is gonna show list of product. Set class to product dash list. And inside that, we are going to define a table. And inside this table, we are going to show list of products. T head, TR, td th its table header id and close th duplicate them for name price category brand and the last one is action name price category brand and action good close tr close t head and and open t body inside t body we're gonna use products array we will define that later as use map function to map product objects to trs table row 
first cell is for product ID, like this, and duplicate that for product name, price, category, and brand. Name, price, category, brand, and the last TD is for action. There are two actions for a product. The first one is edit and the second one is delete button set id of this button to dollar sign product dot underline id like this and set class to edit button set title to edit and close the button duplicate this for delete 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 and delete at the end of map use join to get rid of extra commas like this let's close the tr it's time to close the t body and table it's time to define products at the very beginning of render function i'm going to send an ajax request to get products const products equal to await get products we need to implement get products but first of all let's change render to async good and let's go to api.js and implement get products click here open api.js and at the very top of this screen next to get product duplicate that and rename that s at the end of product it should be get products there is no need to get an id and get rid of this the ip should be api slash products we just implemented get products because we already have slash api slash product in the backend let's import that in the product list screen import get products from dot dot slash api let's check the result aha uh -huh. here we have products let's change the title to products and also make action button a bit small to do that what i'm gonna do is to first of all in the product list screen change h1 to product and go to style.css at the very end dot product list buttons you know only for buttons inside product list font size 1.3 rem and padding 0 0.5 rem good the button is gonna get smaller also i'm going to set a prefix width for action let's go for it in the style.css dot tr dash action set width to 10 rem and set the class for action to tr dash action let's check aha uh -huh. you see it's much much better good if you compare this one with this the only change is in the selected option i'm going to set products as a selected let's go back in the dashboard menu dot render in the product screen change selected to products good as you see if i click on dashboard i go to dashboard screen and if i click on products i will go to product screen let's have a last change in this lesson and it's gonna be in home screen in home screen if you check we are sending an ajax request directly from home screen let's get rid of it from here and use the get products that we already created in the api.js so what i'm gonna do i'm going to get rid of this whole code here and define const products equal to await get products and press tab to import products from api get rid of util import here and that's it i have products right here if products dot error 
you know if you check the api if there is an error i fail the error failed then render a def set class to error and then mention dollar sign products dot error and wrap it inside backtick like this so if you check the home page you see all products here and if there is an error you will get the error okay that's it for this lesson let's review what we did so far first of all in the api.js we defined get products to get list of products from backend in the index.js we introduced a new route for managing products in the admin dashboard we created product list screen and inside that we created create button and we created a list of products there and also there is a button to create product and also buttons for edit and delete products we style the column for actions to make the font size of button a bit smaller and have a fixed width for action column that's it for this lesson for next lesson we are going to focus on create product so far we just use data.js as a static source of product in the backend in the next lesson we are going to create a collection into mongodb database to save product information until that lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to implement create product in the final version of amazona when you click on create product a new product will be created in the database and you will be redirected to edit page of that product in this lesson we are going to implement the backend side of this so we will start by creating a product model and then in the product router we create a route to make a product let's get to code here is the steps first of all create product model click here in the backend in the models folder right click and create new file set file name to product model inside that we are going to create a model first of all import mongos from mongos and then it's time to define product schema it should be new mongos schema and here it's time to define the fields of product but before starting adding fields i'm going to set option for timestamp to true because i want to record the creation date and update date of products in the database let us start by introducing fields for sure the first field for a product is name and it should be of type a string and require this true i'm going to duplicate this for description category brand image price count in stock rating and num reviews for price it should be number and i'm going to set the default number to 0, 0.0 it's a decimal point content stock to number set rating to number and set default for rating to 0, 0.0 and also for num reviews set the type to number and default to zero it's time to create a model based on this schema const product equal to mongos.model the name of model is product and the schema is product schema and at the end export default product good we just define the product and it's time to create a route to make a new product in the routers folder right click new file product router .js and what i'm gonna do here is to import express from express after that define a router the router name is product router from express router 
sorry, it should be express.expect. And it's time to create a route for post. Post a new product to the backend. Router.post, the path is going to be slash. So the final pass is slash API slash products. And only authenticated user can have access to it. And only admin user, you know, you should to put is off and is admin because the output of is off is going to be used for is admin. And here it's time to use express async handler and inside rec and res. I'm going to put some code to create a new product. Const product equal to new product. And inside the query braces, I'm going to add information about the new product. The data that I'm going to put here is sample data because when user click on create product, I don't have any information about name, description, and etc. So all of them are sample data. The name is sample product. And the others should be like that. For description, for description, category, brand, and image. Let's get rid of extra one. Sample image. Let's add sample image to the first image in the list. Sample brand sample category and sample description great it's time to import first of all rename router to product router and at the end export that export default product router it's time to import is auth import is auth is admin from util it's time to define is admin. Let's go for it inside util.js. Right after is off, define export const is admin equal to. It's a middleware, so it accept request and next. Inside this function, I'm going to check if rec.user exists or not. And if rec.user.isAdmin is true or not. If rec.user exists and rec.user.isAdmin is true, then next. I mean go to the next handler. Otherwise, res set a status to 401. You know, this line happens when a regular user try to update a product which is only for admin and send this error message message equal to token is not valid for admin user good and put a dot before send here is the body of is admin there is a typo admin like this and if you go to product router there shouldn't be any error here for is admin it's time to import express async handler. Import express async handler from express async handler library. Good. At this point in the body of post function, I need to call product.save const created product equal to await product.save and define this function as an async. So I need to return this product if there is no error and I'm gonna check if created product is not false or null rest.status201 it's a code for created items and send the message equal to product created and the product equal to created product good Let's implement the else part. Else, I should return error, press dot status 500 and send message equal to error in creating product. Okay, I need to import product here. Get rid of T and select this one. Press tab at the very top. 
product should be imported. Good. I just created product router and product model. It's time to go server.js and use product router at this point, right after user app.use slash API slash products. And the responder is product router. Select this one, press tab to import product router automatically. Good. It's time to test. Open product list screen and in the after render, I'm going to add event to create product button. Here is the ID of it. Document.getElementById create product button. Add event listener for click. And the responder is gonna call const data equal to await. I need to call create product here. Create product and after that redirect user to the details of that product document dot location dot hash should be slash product slash dollar sign inside dollar sign data dot product dot underline id let's make it backtick like this and put an s slash and type edit. I'm going to edit this product. Let's close this and it's time to define it as an async and get rid of dot and make it like comma. Great. I just defined the handler for create button click and it's time to implement create product. Go to API and after get products and get product, it's time to define export const create product it doesn't accept any parameter but it's an async function create try catch to catch any errors and if there is an error just return this line i just copy it from here and in the body section first of all i need to get the token const token it's admin token get user info and then it's time to create axios request const response equal to await axios set url to api url slash api slash products and set headers to set content type to application json and set authorization to barrier token and then it's time to check the response f response that the status text doesn't equal to created so there should be an error through new error and the error content should be data.message otherwise return response.data good i just created this let's go to product screen get rid of t and select it to import product create product in api the last change should be in API and we need to set the method in the Axios call. Set method to post. It's a post request because we are going to create a resource on the backend. Let's click on create product. And here we are getting an error. It says invalid token. When you get this type of error, the best way is click here, select cookie, click remove, done, and then click on sign in and sign in as an admin. Then click on dashboard here and then click on create record. We are getting an error. It says content stock path is required. Let's go back to the product model here and for content stock set default to zero. By having this change, if I click again on create product, as you see, I'm getting product created and here is the information about the product. Good. I get redirected to the edit page of that product. And for next lesson, we are going to implement this part. So let's review what we did in this lesson. First of all, we created product model and it contains all information about the product. 
and it's part of our database right now. After that, we defined a router to create a new instance of product. In this way, we need to define is admin middleware because we need to make sure the user that create a product is admin user. So in the util.js, we define is admin. It just check rec.user that is admin that already filled by is off at this line. After that, inside server.js, we imported product router and define the router for this path slash API slash products. And then we just jump to front end part and in the product screen, we created a handler for click on create product button. And when user click on it, we call create product. In the API section of backend, we define a create product function that send an Ajax request to the server at this address slash API slash product to create a new instance of product and send back the ID to the product list screen at this point, and we just use that to redirect user to the edit page of that newly created product. That's it for this lesson. And for next lesson, we are going to focus on edit and delete product. Until that lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to implement edit product screen. We're gonna build a screen like this that shows edit product as a title and name, price, image, brand content stock category and description field should be editable by user and when user click on update this data should be updated in the screen let's get to code before to start coding let's fix the issue with listing product in the home page if you go to the backend in the server.js i'm going to get rid of these two method because they read data from static data.js and then go to product router and create two routes for get and get by ID. The first one is product router.get and for root address express async handler for rec and res. And here rec and res are async. I'm going to get products and set products to await capital product dot find without any filter and then rest dot send those products a replacement for listing all products and the next one is gonna be duplicate of this to get a specific product with a specific id so here in the find method should be find by id rec dot params dot id and get rid of extra code and here it's product not products by having these changes in the product router and get rid of the static router for products here if you check the result this time you will have this data here is the sample product that we just created in previous lesson and have new products like this. So what I'm gonna do at this step is to enable editing product. Now it's time to edit the product. First of all, we need to create product edit a screen. Let's create that. Go to front end folder inside screens, right click and new file product edit a screen dot js define product edit edit a screen as an object with after render and render after render and render and in the render function first of all let's call parse request url const request equal to parse request url and get product equal to await get product and the parameter is request.id let's make this function async and after setting async i need to get product and export product edit a screen like this at the very top i need to import parse request url 
import parse request url from dot dot slash util and import get product from api import product from dot dot slash api at this point i have the information about the product from backend and i need to show them in the screen at the moment i'm going to only show the name of product like this and then let's go to index.js to register this product edit screen scroll down select index and right before that product slash colon id slash edit and set the responder to product edit screen press tab to import that after setting product edit screen for edit where it's time to fix an issue in util.js in the front end and here in the parse request url for the return section instead of action make it like where after setting this change it's time to go to product list screen and add event to edit buttons scroll up in the after render right after create product button we're gonna get access to edit buttons and set them to document dot get element by class name and the name of class for edit button is edit button convert edit buttons to array dot from edit buttons and for each item i mean for each edit button let's implement this algorithm add event listener for click add event listener for click on each edit button and in the listener redirect user to the edit page of that product document location hash equal to slash product slash dollar sign edit button dot id slash edit button edit button dot id here contains the id of that product let's check the results go to dashboard products and here select the product click on edit aha uh -huh. you will be redirected to sample product and it's the name of this product we are good to go to create form for editing product at this moment I'm going to go to product edit screen and instead of returning this, I'm going to return an edit screen. First of all, create a div and set class of div to content to create a padding around it. And then it's time to define a link to back to products. Anchor href is going to be product list back to products and close it wrap it inside a div and make the indentation like this and create another div this div is gonna be a form container so it's for container and inside this form container let's define a form set id of it to edit product form and close the form inside that define a ul set the class name to form items class to form items create an li inside this li put the title it's gonna be h1 edit product and here the id of product dollar sign product dot id close it and close the li next li is gonna be a label and input box for name label for name close the label and make an input set type to text name to name value to dollar sign product dot name put a curly braces here and set id to name and close that good close the li and close the ul 
Name is the first input box. We have other input boxes for price, image, brand, content stock, category, and description. And at the end, I just create another one and it should be a button of type submit and set class to primary to make it gold. Close the button and the title of this button should be update. Let's check the result. Uh -huh. It should be like this. For the idea of product, I'm going to use substring to only keep the first eight character of it. At the very top for H1 set substring to zero column eight. So it's time for updating other fields of product. Let's get to code. After name is price, type is number, name is price, and the value and ID should be price. Next one is image and also for price. Next one is image, a small image, and paste it for all fields. The next is gonna be brand. For image, I'm going to define the dimensions. It's gonna be 680 x 830. Next one should be brand, small brand, and copy this, paste it here and here. The next content stock, count, count, and stock, content stock, and copy, paste. Next one is gonna be category, small category, copy and paste like this. The last one is description and use that here, 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 and here. Good, let's check the result. Aha, uh -huh. as you see, I have all information about this product right here. If I click on back to result, I will be redirected here. And if I click on create new product, I will create a new product. You know, if I go back, you see, it's gonna be five. If I click again and go back, it's gonna be six. So that's it for this lesson. For next lesson, we are going to implement the update button and we need to create a route on the server and also in the api.js, we need to create update button, update product there. Let's review what we did in this lesson. First of all, in the server.js, we removed static data for products and move them to the product router and load the product from the database instead of data.js. The next change was on the index.js, we added product edit screen to the list of a screen and we just fixed uh, error in the util.js in the front end instead of action we changed that to verb and also we created product edit screen to show all information about a product and create text boxes to update those information and the last one was about product list screen to add an event on click button in the screen that's it for this lesson and for next lesson, we are going to implement update products in the backend side. Until that lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to implement product updates. In the final version, when you click on edit and in the form, you enter a change for, let's say, name and price and click on update button, you will be redirected to the list of products page and your changes is gonna be applied. We are going to implement that right here. When user click on edit button on current version of JS Amazona, here we are going to manage form submit and apply changes to the backend in the database. Let's go for it. Here is the plan. First of all, we need to handle form submit, open, product edit a screen and in the after render section we need to get access to edit product form and add event listener for submit action let's do that document get element by id and here the id is 
edit product form. Then press enter and a dot add event listener. The type of event is submit. And here let's define an async function inside that we are going to prevent form post back. So as a parameter, I add E as an event parameter and inside submit, I call e.prevent default. By having this line of code, when user click on update button, this form is not gonna be post back to the server. Then call show loading from util.js because we are going to show an overlay while we are updating the product. And let's call update product. We will implement that in the api.js. And the parameters that I'm gonna pass to update product is new values for product. The ID is gonna be request.id. So don't forget at the very beginning of this function, define request equal to parse request URL request. And I'm gonna use the ID of product in the URL. And then it's time to read from the input boxes values document dot get element by id for name field it should be from name dot value let's duplicate that for other information about the product including price image brand category count in stock and the last one is description copy and paste for the object we're gonna pass to the update product function in the api.js. Good. After calling this function, we need to hide loading overlay. After that, it's time to check the error. If data.error exists, then I need to show a error message. Show message, you know, import it like this. And what's the message? Data.error. Otherwise, if there is no error, after updating product in the edit screen, I want to redirect user to the product list because in the product list, user can see their changes. Document.location.hash equal to slash product list. Product list. Nice. Let's fix the hide loading here press tab to import it right here and next change is gonna be defining update product function open api.js and right after create product we are going to create update product let's duplicate create product because create and update are very similar to each other and I'll rename it to update product and the parameter is product itself inside this function change a method from post to put because we are updating the resource on the back end and also in the body section for body pass the product itself and also for the url put slash dollar sign product dot underline id here is the path for updating a resource the last change in the update product is response to the status text. It should be OK, not created, because we're not creating a resource on the back end. We're just updating that. That's it. The update product is ready, and it's time to go to Product Router and implement this API. Click on Explorer in the back end folder, Router, Product Router. And here it's time to define a put router for product product router dot put and here is the path slash id and the middleware for authentication first of all user need to be authenticated second user need to be admin and inside async handler i mean express async handler define async rec and rest and inside that first of all we need to get product id from rec.params.id and after getting that it's time to get information 
about this product from database. const product equal to await capital product find by id product id product id. At this point, I need to check existence of product. If it does exist, update product.name by the body of this request. I mean the data that user entered in the text boxes and duplicate that for price, image, brand, category, count in stock, and description. And then copy them for field on the left side, like this. After updating product, it's time to save it. So at this point, I call await product.save. Const updated product equal to small product dot save because here the product comes from the find by id function and i just updated that right here with small product it's an object and here it's a you know model object after calling product dot save it's time to check updated product if there is an error it should be null and if everything is okay i send a message and updated product to the front end. Rest.send message is gonna be product updated and the product is gonna be updated product. Otherwise, there is an error. Rest.status 5000 and send error message. Message error in updating product. Also, for the first if condition. The else part should be similar to this. It's an error, but this time the error is 404 because the product with this ID doesn't found. Product not found. That's it. We just implemented the backend and inside the product screen, I need to import update product like this. In the API.js, instead of body, change that to data. And let's check again product x and click on update as you see it just changed to product x so if i try to update other information let's say t-shirt let's say shirt one price 99 image let's say product two brand nike content stock 10 category shirts and best shirts and let's rename that to feet shirt and then save it as you see all information applied and if you click on the home page can you see this it's feet shirt nike 99 dollar and when you go to details of it you can see the best shirt as a description and all information also status is in a stock because we set content stock to 10 but for others it's unavailable because by default they are zero that's it we just implemented updating product let's review what we did in this small and short session first of all in the product screen we handled submit on edit product form and inside that we show loading message and called update product from api.js in the front end and we just passed all information that user entered into the text boxes also in the api.js we added a new function update product and inside that we just called a backend api for updating a product as a put http web and inside that, we just passed all information that user entered inside the input boxes. And the last change was in the backend in a product router, we just added a new API for updating a product only for admin user. And inside that, we just read from body of the request and updated the product fields based on them. Great. That's it for this session and for Next session, we are going to implement delete function together, and it's going to be a short session too. Until that lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to implement upload product image. In the final version of 
JSM as on now. When you click on edit, there is a file input right here. When you click on choose file, you can select a file from your computer. Let's say I select this one and click on open. A loading box appears and after uploading this image, you can see image uploaded successfully message right here. And when you click OK, the address inside this text box, the image text box is going to be changed by the uploaded file. And if you click on update, it's going to be updated. Let's check home page. As you see, product to replaced by the uploaded image. If you right click and open the image in a new tab, you can see that its path is different from others. Let's say like this one, which is, you know, static images inside front end folder. This one uploaded to the backend in the uploads folder in the backend. In this lesson, we are going to implement this feature together. Let's go to the plan here. Uh, we need to install a package to upload file on an Express.js web server. The name of this package is Mulder. Let's install that. Open your terminal. Click on plus. In the root folder, npm install Mulder. After installing this, we need to create a router for uploads. Go to backend router, right click new file, upload router.js. And here I'm going to define the backend part of file uploading. First of all, import express from express and import malter from malter. After that, it's time to define a storage for malter. Const storage equal to malter dot disk storage and I need to pass some parameters for disk storage. Disk storage means that uploaded file in this computer in the local server. The first parameter that I need to define for disk storage is destination. Destination is a function that accepts request, a file that need to be uploaded and a callback. And this callback should be called inside this function. The first parameter is null and the second parameter is the path of uploading. I set path to upload slash. Second parameter is file name. And in this function, I set the format of file name. It's similar to destination, file, and callback. And inside that, I call the callback function the first parameter null and second one is the name of this file that will be saved in the uploads folder. Let's use this backtick dollar sign date that now it just return the current date based on millisecond and append JPEG at the end of it because we are going to save an image. After having this setting, it's time to define an upload object const upload equal to malter and as a parameter i pass storage right here in the next line it's time to define router from express router and let's define a post method for router because we are going to create a file in the backend we need to use post only admin user are able to post an image for products so is off and is admin should be here and after that upload single and what is the name of the field for file is image so after uploading the file it's time to handle the request rec and res and inside that rec.file filled by the information about the file that have been imported in the upload folder. Res.status. The status is 204 and send image equal to backtick slash dollar sign rec.file.path. It's the path of uploaded file. That's it. Let's import is auth and is admin import if auth and is admin from util and at the end we need to export 
default router. Let's use upload router in the server.js right before user app.use slash API slash uploads and the responder is upload router. Let's import up, upload router right here router upload router and get rid of data.js in the upload router rename router to upload router like this and by having this the auto import is gonna be enabled for upload router at this point good we have done with the backend part let's go to front end and put an input box in the product edit screen in the front end folder src screens go to product edit screen Go to product edit screen and image field right here. After this, we need to add file input. Input type is file, name is image file, and ID is image file, and close it. That's it about the UI part, and let's go to after render method to add event to this input box. I scroll up. And right after submit handler, I'm going to define another handler document dot get element by ID image file press enter dot add event listener for change. And here change means when user selected a file and click open, this method is gonna raise async and the parameter is event. Inside that, I need to get access to the selected file. That's the way to do that. const file equal to e.target.files0 because files is an array and uh, we just want to upload the first selected file. We get access to the first one. And it's time to define a new form data. Form data is a class that make it possible to create a body section for Ajax request. Form data equal to new capital form data. Let's append this image to form data like this. Form data dot append. Append accept two parameters. The first is the name of this field and second is the file content. And it's time to show loading message because we are uploading a file. And at this point, I call the Ajax request, await, upload, product, image, and just pass the form data right here. After that, hide loading because it's done. And it's time to check the error. If there is an error in uploading, show that error to the user. Otherwise, I need to show a message that upload was successful. Show message, image uploaded successfully. And set the value of text field for image to the value to the path of uploaded file. It should be like this, document.getElementById image. This image is a text input. Its value should be the address of uploaded file, data.image. And here data.image is exactly the value you send back in the send function right here in the backend. Good, we are done with the UI part and it's time to implement upload product function. Open api.js and right after upload product, create export const upload product image. It accept form data and inside that we need to create a try catch to detect errors. And here I'm going to use this one and rename this to error. Good. First of all, I need to define const response equal to await axios. And inside carry braces, I need to pass URL to API URL slash API slash uploads method should be post headers headers we need to pass the token because it's 
an authorized URL. Authorization equal to barrier token. And to get the token, I just copy this line and paste it right here to get the token. And set content type. Content type here is going to be multi-part for data because we are uploading a file. It's time to check the response. Response dot status text doesn't equal to created because we are creating a record. There is an error through new error response dot data dot message. Otherwise, res return response dot data to the product edit screen right here. Let's import it. Press tab to automatically import update product image from api.js. And don't forget, for form data, we need to pass it into data field for Axios. In the root folder of project, right click here, new folder, and set folder names to upload. Inside that, right click new file and set file name to file.txt. Also, if you are pushing this to a GitHub repository in the .get ignore, you need to add these two lines, upload slash start.jpg and uploads slash start.png. Uh, you just, it's just necessary if you created a Git repository and push that to a GitHub or other remote Git repository. Good. So let's try that again. Select the file, select it. And in the network section, I'm getting an error. Select file, select it. Aha. Uh -huh. This time it says image uploaded successfully. And the code here is 201. Click OK. And as you see, the image is going to be in slash uploads slash this path. If you go to the upload folder right here, you can see the uploaded image right here. And if you save these changes and click on the home page, you cannot see that image. If you right click on image and open it in new window, you will get this error message. It says cannot get this path. You know, it's okay because for development phase, we do not need to show the uploaded images. But for next lesson, we will fix this issue by implementing the build script for backend and frontend. Okay, let's review what we did in this lesson. First of all, we installed Malter as a library to upload file to the backend. And uh, we just created upload router and make it part and make it as a path for and make it as a API path at slash API slash upload. We created upload router and inside that we upload a file in the upload directory. Also, we created a folder named upload and inside that we created file.txt because if we want to make it part of a GitHub repository, uh, empty folder is not part of GitHub repository. So I just created an empty file to make the upload folder part of GitHub repository. Also in the front end side, in the product edit screen, we just created an input box of type file to choose a file by user and which has added an event handler for change of that file and when users select a new file it's gonna be uploaded to the server by this part of code here we call upload product image from api.js and in the api.js we send an authorized request to the server to upload a file based on the selected file by user. Good, that's it for this lesson. Uh, as you see, you cannot see the images on the web page, but if you go to the upload folder, you can see that image. In the next lesson, we will go for building project. And after this lesson, you will be able to see the upload images in the web application. Until that lesson, bye-bye.
In this lesson, we are going to implement the production version of JS Amazona. If you check the final version in the Heroku server at this address, you can see that this version is for production, not for development. If you click on inspect and go to network section and select all and refresh, what you will see is a main.js file in the root folder. In this lesson, we are going to create a build command to build the main.js and also we want to serve the file in the upload folder. Let's implement that. First step is going to be creating build a script for frontend. Go to package.json inside frontend folder and right after start command, enter build command. For build, we are going to run webpack and set mode to production, dash dash mode to production and set output file to data slash main.js and put a comma at the end of it. By running this command, all files in the src folder will be merged and converted to ES5 version of JavaScript all files in the src folder will be merged into main.js. Good. Let's test it. Open terminal and go to frontend folder. And inside that, run this command npm run build and press enter. As you see, here is the command exactly what we wrote here. What this command does is converting all this file to main.js. If you open explorer, as you see, main.js has a new file added to here. I'm going to add this to the git ignore. So here I right click and add to git ignore because I'm not gonna push this to the git repository. Good. The next step is gonna be in the package.json, but this time in the root folder. So go to the script section and a build command for this one. What I'm going to do is to create a ES5 version of backend folder. It should be with this command, with Babel, and define the folder that I'm going to convert all files inside that folder. And the folder name is backend. And set destination to create the build version. I set the destination to dist. Before that, and put a comma to create this command. Before that, I'm going to delete the previous dist folder if it exists. To do that, run this command rm-rf and ampersand ampersand. By having this, I can run two different commands in one single shot. So create a new terminal and save package.json and run this command. You know, I'm in the root folder, exactly same in the same folder as package.json and run npm run build. By running this command, a new folder with name dist is going to be created right here. And inside that, you can see all your all your backend folder files will be here, but this time they are in, you know, ES5 version of JavaScript. So Node can run them easily. So the last command we need to have in the package.json is serve, serve, and put this command, Node. I'm going to run the server.js inside this folder. So it should be Node this slash server.js and put a comma. Okay, by having serve command, it's time to close all instance of your terminal. You know, the backend and frontend npm start should be closed and open again the terminal and this time run npm run serve. Aha, uh -huh. you see this time you have the production version of your project open it. As you see, we are getting this error. And what we're gonna do is to convert that to this one. Let's go for it. Open server.js, not in this folder. 
in the backend folder and at this point i am going to serve all files inside frontend folder to do that use this command app dot use express dot static and here i'm going to use path dot join to join the root folder with the frontend folder path dot join the first parameter is underline underline dir name is the current path of the running script you know the current folder and concatenate that with slash dot dot slash front end like this import path like this import path from path and it just gonna move to here you know what this line does is to serve all files inside front end folder right here so i can access to images I can access to let's say style, index.html, and main.js. Also, we need to serve the index.html too. To serve that file as a you know the root file, I'm gonna use this command app.get star. Star means that all URL that user enter after the name of domain should be handled by this responder rec res and res.send file and the address of file is gonna be the index.html in the front end folder i'm gonna use path join dir name and slash dot dot slash front end slash index.html yeah it should be this command let's test the result we need to stop the project and we need to run build npm run build and after build i can run npm run serve and then open this address as you see you have the production version of js amazon at this folder but as you see i cannot see the uploaded images if you open this you can see that the upload folder doesn't serve we need to fix this let's go for it and what i'm gonna do right before express static add this line app.use slash uploads you know when user enter slash uploads i need to serve express dot static path dot join dir name and the upload path slash dot dot slash uploads you know the reason of having dot dot slash is because of having server.js inside this folder so i need to go back one folder and then go back to front end that's why i'm using dot dot slash to go back one folder let's do that again stop npm stop running application run npm build and run npm serve and let's check that again aha uh -huh. this time the image served successfully if you open it in a new page you can see that slash uploads slash name of file dot jpeg is gonna work okay let's review what we did in this session we created build script for front end a build script for back end we updated server.js to serve front end build folder and upload folder also we stopped the running front end and back end and then we just run npm build in back end and front end folder and at the end we run npm run serve to serve http column slash slash localhost column 5000 and it just show all images and also the website at this point when it's ready let's get rid of it and run application like previous one npm run start and open a new terminal go to front end npm run start for the front end folder as you see you will not see the image anymore because uh you know it just serve in the production version of your application not the development mode when you are in port 8080 you are in development mode so we just work with this situation and when we release our project to the production server like Hiroko 
it's gonna show all images. That's it for this lesson. Let's review what we did in this lesson. In the package.json at the backend folder, we created two command build to remove previous version of this. Oops, there is a mistake here. Let's go to explorer, open your package.json in the root folder, not in the front end. And after rm-rf, put a space and set this. By running this command, we just delete all files inside. We just delete this folder and all files. So if you run it again, it's gonna work. So let's review. We just created build folder. We just created build command for building backend. Created serve command to serve the production version of backend. In the package.json, we created build command to create a production ready version of all JavaScript files inside dot slash main.js. And at the end, we updated the server.js by importing path because we are going to use that to serving files in upload folder, in front end folder, and also we serve the index.html as a home page of our application. That's it for this lesson. For next lesson, we finish the product management section of admin by implementing the delete product and then go for the next lesson. Until next lessons, but in this lesson, we are going to implement delete products. When you as an admin go to dashboard, in the product list, there is a delete button. And when you click on delete, a confirm message like this appears. And when you click on OK, this products remove and this page refreshed and the product deleted from your products list. If you go to homepage, that product doesn't exist anymore. Let's implement this in our JS Amazon app. In the dashboard section, product list, there is a delete button. When you click on it, nothing happens. Let's implement event handler for delete button. And also we need to create a backend for delete an item from database. Open your code. And here is the plan. First of all, we need to update product list screen. To handle delete button, let's go for it. In the front end folder, src screens, open product list screen. And for the after render section, right after edit, it's time to create delete buttons. Const delete buttons equal to document dot get element by class name. And the name of class is delete dash button it's time to convert this object to array using array.from delete buttons and for each item inside this we are going to add event to all buttons we are going to add event to each delete button in the screen it's gonna be like this delete button dot add event listener the type of event is click and there should be an async function as a responder. And inside that, first of all, we need to get confirm from user confirm. And the message is, are you sure to delete this product? And if it's yes, the confirm return true and we go into if condition. First of all, show loading message. After that, it's time to call await delete product. We need to implement that inside api.js. And the parameter that goes into delete product is the ID of current element delete button dot ID. And after successful deletion, it's time to hide loading. And at the end, we need to re-render the screen based on current product list screen. Just pass product list screen. It's time to import show loading, hide loading, and re-render at the very top. 
import show loading hide loading and re-render from util good it's time to implement delete product in the api put comma delete product and go to api file and to make it simple what i'm gonna do is to duplicate create product and rename that to delete product and here is gonna be the id of product we're gonna delete it's product id product id and after getting token it's time to send them ajax request but the method is delete and the url should include product id product id so if the result isn't okay show the message of error and if everything is okay we we'll return the data and if there is an error in the catch section we send an object that contain data that contain error and it shows the error message so in the code i can get data here and if data.error exists, I can show a message. Show message, press tab to import it right here from util. And show data.error. Otherwise, re render a screen and at the end, hide loading. Great. We just implemented the front end part and it's time to go to backend and create a delete HTTP verb for product deletion. Open product router in the backend router folder and at the very end create a method for delete a product. Product router dot delete. The first parameter is gonna be the path name slash colon ID. Second parameter is for checking user authenticated. And the third one is for checking user is admin. And inside express async handler, define rec and res. And inside that, set it as a async because we are sending a database request to delete a product. And inside this function, first of all, we need to find that product to delete product equal to await capital product dot find by id rec dot params dot id after getting the product it's time to delete that but before that we need to check if product exists then try to delete that and here i'm going to define const deleted product equal to await product dot remove and at the end res dot send message should be product deleted and the product should be deleted product if there is an error res dot status 404 send message product not found great we just implemented the delete handler in the backend api and it's time to check the results let's create a new product and then go to back to products and i'm going to delete this product delete aha uh -huh, it just deleted to make sure that we are deleting the right one i'm going to click on edit and enter sample product one and update that here is this one and just click on delete and okay as you see sample product one deleted great we just implemented deleting product let's review what we did in this lesson first of all in the front end side we attached an event for all delete buttons and if user click on delete button we show loading overlay and then call delete product from api.js and if there is an error we show error otherwise we re-render the screen to show product deleted for the user 
In the API.js, we created a new function to send an AJAX request to the server to delete a product. And in the server inside product router.js, we defined a router for deleting a product. And inside that, we check that user is authenticated and is admin. If there is an error, we send error message to the front end. Otherwise, we delete that and show product deleted. Great. That's it for this lesson. And we just finish managing products section in the admin. And for the next session, we are going to show categories in sidebar menu. Until that lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to implement orders management. First of all, we need to create a screen to show a list of orders like this and put edit and delete button next to each order, make it possible for admin to edit an order or delete that. This lesson is focusing on this page and for edit and delete actions in next lessons. Let's implement them. Open your VS code and here is the steps. Because admin orders and admin products are very similar to each other, what I'm gonna do is to duplicate product list screen, which is product management, and rename that to order list screen. Order list screen. Inside that, rename products to orders. Control F, product, keep match case active and you know i'm just replacing small product with small orders there are 18 times and capital product with capital order which is 11 times and by having this i just need to implement get orders let's go to api.js and search for get products yeah copy this and scroll down for the section for orders at the very end as you see there is a create order right after create order paste get products and rename products to orders orders here and that's it we just created get orders function in api and we can use that right here and for delete order do the same for delete product search for delete product inside api.js as you see here is the delete product i just copy this and scroll down at the very end of the screen right after get orders paste it and rename product to order order here order here and here instead of products there should be order that's it if you go back to the order list screen and here you have delete order good Let's go to backend, open order router, and inside order router, we need to implement two functions, two APIs, list orders and delete orders. What I'm gonna do is to copy them from product router. Open product router. This one is for delete. Copy from here and go to order router and right after post paste it right here and rename it to order router order and rename this to order and also for deleted product it should be deleted order order deleted and order not found and as you see there is a typo in async i just fix it like this and also i need to import as admin type in press tab to import is admin right here in the product router fix the issue with async as you see async typo is wrong here 
what I'm gonna do is to select this and press function and keep function and press F2 and rename that to the correct one you know async is correct and press enter it just fixed for all instances in your product router good we just implemented delete method for order and it's time to implement order list for product list let's implement that at the very top of order.js what i'm gonna do is to define a route for a list all orders order router dot get for root i mean slash api slash orders and only authenticated an admin user can have access to a list of all orders is off comma is admin and inside express async handler what we're gonna do is to define rec and rest don't forget it's gonna be async inside the body of this function what i'm gonna do is to get all orders const orders equal to await capital order dot find and parameter is empty object it means that return all orders and after getting the orders we need to press dot send orders great we just implemented the get method and also the delete method it's time to add order list screen in front end to the routes in the index.js click explorer in the front end open index.js and to the list we need to add slash order list order list equal to order list screen press tab to import order list right here let's go to the api.js and for listing orders i need to pass authorization token i'm going to copy it from here this line and also the authorization inside the header section that's it let's check the result yes this time we are getting the id of orders but other fields are wrong we need to fix the column based on orders information not products information let's go for it at the very inside order list screen and in the columns i'm going to replace them with order information date of order total price the user that created this order paid at and delivered at and inside the information second field is gonna be date created at third one is total total price next one is user dot name the next one is paid at if it's null it means that it doesn't pay so i just enter no and duplicate that for delivered delivered at let's check the result as you see we have all information but for user it is undefined the reason is we need to populate user from order in the backend let's go to order router and at the very top of this here is the place we just get list of all orders i'm going to enter this command from mongoose and mongodb populate user so what this code does is to go to order you know the order model and search for user because user is connected to user object it load the information about this user from the user model and put them inside that order so by having these changes if you go and check result and refresh your page you will get the name of customer inside the user section 
great. We need to fix the issue with edit and delete and make them small. Inside order list screen, here is the TR for them. Here I need to make these two buttons small. So what I'm gonna do is to copy order dash list and go to style.css. At the very end, you will see all buttons inside product list. So I need to make them for button inside order list too. By having this change, uh -huh. it's gonna get a small and beautiful. And as you see here, the last one just paid. And here is the date of payment. And for next session, we implement the delivery. Also, there is no need to create an order. Let's remove that in the order list screen. Get rid of this button. And also the create button right here. There is no need to create an order because only customers create an order. And we can get rid of it right here. Let's check that. Great. And if we compare that with the final one right here, they are very similar to each other. Good. In this lesson, we just implemented order list. And for next lesson, we go for action section to implement edit and delete an order. As a last part of this lesson, we are going to implement delete because we just copy and paste from product list screen, the delete should work here. Let's try that. I just click on delete and here, okay. As you see, it just worked. Let's try this one. You know, the end of it is 20 and I'm going to delete this and click okay with 20 deleted. Great. What we did in this lesson is to implement list orders and delete orders. Let's review what we did. In the backend side, in the order router, we added two new APIs for delete and for list. Also, in the front end, in the API, we define get orders to send an AJAX request to server to get all orders and also delete an order by its ID. Also, in the index.js, we added a new screen and we created order list screen. In the after render, we add event for delete an order and in the render function, we get all orders from backend and list them in the screen. That's it for this lesson. For the next lesson, we are going to work on edit an order and redirect user to the edit page of an order and make it possible for admin user to set an order as a complete, you know, so deliver the state to true. Until that lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to implement deliver order. When admin in the order section, I as an admin should be able to edit that order and then click on deliver order to update the order information right here. You know, when I click on deliver order, it says order delivered and it just get updated. If I go back to list of orders, this time this orders state is delivered and here I see the deliver date. We are going to implement this feature in this lesson. In the current version, when you go to dashboard and click on orders, you just see list of orders. If let's say we are going to work on this one because its payment state is done, and we are going to set the deliver state to done too. When I click on edit, nothing happens. Let's implement that. We are going to redirect user to slash order slash ID of this order. Open order list screen. And in the after render section, what we're gonna do is to add event for edit buttons. Let's duplicate this one and rename delete to edit like this. After changing delete to edit, in the click event for edit button, there shouldn't be a confirm box. And what we're gonna do is to just redirect user to the details page of that order. 
document at location at hash equal to slash order slash and here I need to use the ID of current element so it should be dollar sign edit button dot ID good let's check it here this time I click on edit aha uh -huh. I get redirected to the details page of this order what I need to do at this point is to check if this order is paid but isn't delivered I need to show a deliver button right here so we need to update order screen go to VS code and open order screen in the order screen scroll down to the section for order summary and here right after PayPal button create a lie and inside that I'm going to use this condition if order dot is paid and isn't delivered exclamation mark order dot is delivered should be false and user is admin is admin then render this a button which its id is deliver order button and classes primary and full width inside that title of this button is deliver order and close it otherwise show nothing that's it good for order is paid I can use only is paid and uh, order is delivered only is delivered because I just used the constructing assignment at this line so I can use is paid and is delivered like this and for the last one for is admin what I need to do is to scroll up and right here I need to read the user information in the render function const is admin inside curry braces get user info that's it good let's check the result aha uh -huh. as you see deliver order appears here it's time to add event to this and when user click on it the data in the shipping section should be updated I scroll up in the order screen definition and inside the after render function I need to add event to deliver order button document.get element by ID deliver order button add event listener for click and here is the responder inside the responder which is an async function because we are going to send an ajax request to update the state of delivery of this order i need to call await deliver order and the order id is request.id but first of all i need to use this line of code here and request.id like this after that show message and the message is order delivered and we need to re-render the screen you now press tab to import it and which screen order a screen and here the deliver there is a typo yeah deliver and before that show loading And after that, hide loading. Good, it's time to implement deliver order. Deliver order is very similar to pay order. So what I'm gonna do is to open the API.js and search for pay order and then duplicate that like this and then rename pay to deliver that's it there is no need to have payment info get rid of it right here and here instead of pay it should be deliver 
and everything is very similar to each other, we need to go to the backend to implement slash API slash orders, order ID, deliver, open order router. And as I said before, they are very similar to pay. So search for pay here, uh huh, this one, and duplicate that like this and rename it from pay to deliver. And inside this function, after getting this order from database, it's time to update is delivered, is delivered to true and set delivered at to current date. No need to set the payment info here. And it's time to call the save and we just return the updated order and order delivered. If there is an error, we'll return order not found. Good, let's check the result. Here, I want to click on deliver order. Great, let's go to order screen and here get rid of last R and press tab to import, auto import it from slash API. Uh-huh. And after having this, it's time to test. When I click on deliver order, I want to update the information right here. Click on it. It says order delivered. And as you see, it says delivered at this time. Great. What we did in this session is to implement deliver order. So if I click back, I will go to list of orders. And as you see, this one is paid and is delivered. For other items, because they are not paid, I will not see the deliver button. And don't forget, only admin can see them. That's it for this lesson. Let's review what we did together in this short lesson. First of all, in the order list screen, we added event handler for clicking on edit button and redirect user to order details screen. In the order details screen, we have used get user info to detect admin user. And also at the very end of it, we show deliver button conditionally if the order is paid and isn't delivered and user is admin. When user click on deliver order, at the very top in the after render method, we assigned an event for click on that button. And when user click on it, we show a deliver, we show loading message and then call deliver order Ajax request to update the state of that order to deliver true and update the delivered at date. Great, that's it for this lesson. And we have done managing orders in this lesson. For next lesson, we're going to be focusing on creating dashboard screen, show summary information, and also charts. Until that lesson, bye bye. In this lesson, we are going to implement dashboard screen for administrator. First of all, we go for showing users, orders, and total cells right here. And for next lesson, we, in, we import a chart library to show cells and categories like this. Okay, let's go for the dashboard screen. As you see, it's just a simple text and we're gonna convert that to this style. Let's go for it. Open your dashboard screen and here it's time to get rid of this div and use a UL. Get rid of it. UL set class of this UL to summary items. Close the UL. Inside that, I'm going to define the first LI and this LI is gonna show number of users of this e-commerce website. Create a div inside LI and set the class of div to summary title like this. And inside that create an span and inside the span, create an icon and use font awesome, font awesome for users. Close 
the icon and put on a space and the text should be users close the span and also close the dev so this is the summary title for summary body create a dev set class to summary body and inside that i need to show number of users let's enter 10 and then we will update that based on data from backend close the dev close the ally that's it for the first part because we are going to have three i just duplicate this two times and set the next one to orders and sales orders make it like 15 and sales make it like 150 good let's check the result it's gonna be like this and if you compare that with this one we need to add some style to make them like that so it's time to open style.css and at the very end of this screen create a section for summary items dot summary items set display to flex justify content space around get rid of bullet points make it responsive and get rid of padding and margin also for li's inside that summary items li direct li create a border around it make it like 0.1 rem and gray and solid and create a margin around it like 2 rem also there should be a border radius like 5 pixel and set flex to 1 1 20 rem for summary title let's create a gray background light gray it should be e0 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 make the font size a bit bigger and create a padding around it for one rim and for summary body we're gonna set font size to super big for rim also same padding as title and make text align center let's check the result and fix the typo here summary body let's check the result aha uh -huh. if you compare that with this one we just need to update the colors i'm going to define three colors summary title color one set background color to f0 e0 e0 it's gonna be a bit red next one just make the middle one f so somehow it's gonna be green and make it color two and color three make the blue one f to make it bluish and if you go to users after summary title put color one after summary title for orders color two and for last one color three let's check the result yeah that's it good it's time to load data from server this data are static data and we need to convert them with the real data from server to do that we need to update the render function at the very beginning of dashboard screen define let summary equal to empty object and inside render function update summary by await get summary we need to implement get summary inside api but because we are using await we need to update render function to async so let's implement get summary inside api open api.js at the very end export const get summary is an async function that doesn't accept any parameter 
and inside this function what we're gonna do is to send an ajax request to get order summary create try catch body if there is an error return error you know i'm going to copy from here to make it faster and inside the try body we need to send an ajax request but first of all we need to get the user token token from get user info and then it's time to define response await axios set url equal to api url slash api slash orders slash summary and authorize this url by authorization to barrier token and setting content type to application json after sending this request we need to check that if response.status code doesn't equal to ok through error response.data.message otherwise return response.data great it's time to go to backend in the order router and implement get summary order router at the very end define order router dot get slash summary only authenticated and admin user can have access to it in inside express async handler i define a responder to this api and here it's time to use aggregate mongodb aggregate function const orders await capital order dot instead of find which we have used for getting one or multiple instance of an order this time we are going to use aggregate uh, its behavior is different from find and when you want to uh, summarize data and create different shape of data you know, sum of orders you know or uh, the average of orders and we are going to looking for data like this because what we're gonna do in this api is to get a summary data not a specific order or a bunch of orders so i'm using aggregate aggregate accept an array and each array contain an object and each object should be of a specific type here i'm going to use group it's very similar to group in relational database like sql server and uh, and the field that i'm going to group is null it means that i'm not grouped by a, a specific field what i'm looking for is for number of orders and it's gonna be sum equal to one so what it does is to calculate number of orders number of records and the next one is total cells and it should be sum of this field dollar sign total price so what it does in, is interesting it just sum total price in every record of order and calculate the sum of them and put them inside total sales field so we just calculated the order summary information make this function async because we are using await here and then it's time to go for another function to calculate number of users it's very similar to order one users equal to await aggregate inside array create an object use group and inside that set id to null and set num users to sum one good here i have orders and user summary and it's time to send them back to do that simply rest.send and inside an object users and orders that's it so in the dashboard screen we are going to use those data first of all import get summary 
like this. And the summary object here contains all data we need to show here. To show users get rid of $10 sun curry braces and inside that summary dot users. Users is an array. So I'm looking for the first item in this array and put a dot and then num users. It should be exactly like the one you have in API for get summary. It should be exactly inside. It should be exactly the name you set in the order router inside the users for num users. Great. Do the same for orders. It should be orders and num orders and for sell it should be orders and num sales great after setting this it's time to fix an issue in order router in the backend side what we need to do is to elevate this router at the very top of order router cut it from here and scroll up at the very top paste it right after order router what's the reason for that because if you do not do this when express.js get to this point get to this point set summary as an id and run this router instead of running this great and the last change in the dashboard screen for num cells it should be total right before that and in the aggregate function for user it should be user not order because we are going to get the number of users in the system and we need to import user to import that scroll up import user from models user model by having this change let's check the result aha uh -huh. we have two users and 11 orders and sum of cells or total cells are $720. Great. We just implemented the first part of dashboard and for the next lesson we will be focusing on create a chart based on the data from cells and also show the categories using donut charts. Let's review what we did in this lesson. First of all, we just created summary items in the dashboard and then we added a style for summary items, title and body of it. And also we have used three different colors to show data in an elegant and beautiful way. In the API.js, we send an Ajax request to server to get summary information about orders. And in the order router, we defined a route for returning summary data. Here we have used the aggregate feature of Mongoose to summarize data and create summary based on the data we have in the database. Great, that's it for this lesson. For next lesson, we are going to show chart in dashboard. And at that lesson, we're going to use chart test library. Until that lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to complete the dashboard screen. And it's time to show charts for cells and also for categories. To do that, let's go to dashboard screen first. Open dashboard screen. And right after the section for summary item, we need to create a div for charts div set class to charts inside this div i'm going to create two div the first one is gonna be for cells h2 cells and inside that create a div which is a container for chart set class to ct dash perfect dash fourth and put on a space it's a linear chart, ct-chart-line, and close this div. Good. Also close the parent div, and we are going to create another chart next to, you know, the linear chart. Create a new div, 
set H2 to categories, it's gonna show the diversity of category inside the e-commerce website. Create a dev, set class to city-perfect-fourth. You know, having this style help us to make the chart as big as possible in the screen, the maximum width and height, and set the type of it to city dash chart dash it's gonna be a pie chart to show the categories close it close parent div and also close the parent great let's add a style to charts and also make these two dev next to each other open a style.css at the very end of this screen we need to create a class for charts and set display to flex and set justify content to space between to create the maximum space between charts for devs inside charts s what we need to do is to just set flex one that's enough and if you check the result you see cells and categories and it's time to add charts for chart, we are going to use Chartis library. You can find it at this address and it's super small, only 10 kilobyte. And you can make it part of your project by running npm install Chartis. Let's do that. Open terminal, a new window, go to front end folder, npm install Chartis. After installing this, we need to go to dashboard screen and import chartist to our project import chartist from chartist and after importing that it's time to go to index.html and write before style.css create a link to cdn of chartist chartist work in your project let's get back to dashboard screen and after importing chartist from chartist it's time to use that inside after render in the after render press enter and it's time to create a linear chart use new chartist dot line line is a class and we are going to create an instance from this class and we need to pass parameter the first parameter for line is the element inside your html it's ct dash chart dash line and if you check this it's exactly the name of class for cells so we are going to show the cells information as a linear chart the second parameter is for showing data you know for showing labels which is an array series which is another array too and the third parameter for line is options set show area to true great let's get rid of this error great we need to provide data for labels and series later and before that let's implement the pie chart to new chartist.py like line the first parameter is selector for the element the div we are going to show the chart inside that ct chart pi second parameter like before is for labels and for series and the last parameter is a bunch of options and here we are going to use do not and set the width and angle of do not do not width to 60 and start angle to 270 set show label to true and the last one is do not solid to true after creating pie chart we need to fix the address of css for chart is css what we need to do is to get rid of js in the cd and js part and also right before latest enter chartist.js slash by having this change let's check the result uh-huh as you see we have a 
linear chart but the data is empty and also we have a pie chart but there is no data let's provide data for these charts to do that we need to go to order router in the backend and inside the summary at the very top we need to provide data for daily orders and categories for daily orders right after users for daily orders after getting users info define const daily orders equal to again we are using aggregate await order dot aggregate and inside the array we are using group again group and this time the id is the date the date of order id equal to date to a string and here we are using format with this style year dash month dash and d and capital m means that year should be in four digits after that set date to created at it's the creation date of order and that's it for the id part here we are going to get two data first of all number of orders at this specific day orders equal to sum equal to one and also total price at this date sales equal to dollar sign sum dollar sign total price good we just created the daily orders let's make it part of response and it's time to create product categories data const product categories equal to for sure we need to get access to product this time so we need to import product at the very top of this screen import product from product model and it's time to use it put dot aggregate and inside the aggregate function i'm gonna use group and inside that the id of this group is the name of category dollar sign category there is an e and the second fill is count set sum to one product categories summarize product based on their categories and show the popularity of each category in the product collection good let's use daily orders and product categories in the dashboard screen what i'm gonna do is to work on the after render and inside the chartist line right here and instead of having empty array for labels i'm going to use summary dot daily orders dot we need to map elements inside daily orders to its id because i'm going to show the date you know because its id is the date on the labels of line chart so for data you know in the series paste it but instead of mapping id map cells after setting cells in the series wrap it inside an array it should be inside an array and then aha uh -huh, that's it here is you know in this state there is let's say 60 cells 60 dollar at this state it's about 600 dollars and it's gonna get down at this point so we have done the line chart and it's time to go for pie chart for pie chart it's very similar to this one i just copied this to line and paste it in the pie part but if you check the order router i have count in the category so i copy this and replace that with the count right here and also daily order should be product categories product categories okay after setting series for pi chart we need to get rid of a square bracket for pi because pi is different from lines and in the lines we can show different lines in the screen but for pi there should be only one source for data by having this let's check the result uh-huh as you see for pants we have this for shirts we have 
this one and for sample category we have this and if you check the data you can see that you have two item of sample category and one item of pants and one item of shirts and the dashboard data shows them like this great in this lesson we implemented the cells and categories chart by using charts and it's very similar to this one let's review what we did in this lesson first of all in the index.html we imported chartist.js css in the package.json we installed chartist in the frontend package.json in the style.css we added charts class to show two dev next to each other to show charts in the dashboard screen for after render for line chart and pie chart we define the you know labels and data like this and we use chartist library that we already installed in package.json and at the end in the order router we have defined daily orders data and also product categories data as a part of summary api and we showed them in the you know dashboard screen like this okay that's it for this lesson for next lesson we are going to publish our project on Heroku to publish our work for people around the world until that lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to publish our website on the internet to do that first of all you need to create an account in Heroku.com go to this address dashboard.heroku.com and create an account there after that you will get an email from Heroku to activate your account and after click on activation link you're gonna be redirected to this screen after creating account here it's time to go to cloud.mongodb.com it's very similar to Heroku you need to create an account and you will get an activation email and after clicking on it, you will be redirected to cloud.mongodb.com. After creating account in these two cloud servers, it's time to follow the plan to create a Heroku application. Here is the plan. First of all, we need to stop the projects. Click on recycle bin icon to stop front end project. And again for the back end project and then open your terminal and it's time to add JS Amazon folder to git repository we are going to create a git repository because when it comes to work with Heroku you need to have a git repository it's the command git in it you're not gonna be a master in git just follow this command and you know there is no need to have a background in git and how it works okay so git init is gonna create a new git repository it just create a dot git folder as a hidden folder inside JS Amazon. after that step two is create Heroku account so we just did it in dashboard.heroku.com we created a new account next step is gonna be installing Heroku CLI. If you search for Heroku CLI in Google, the first link is gonna be this address. At this address, click on download and install. And based on your operating system, select one of this. For me, I just run this command. And by running this command, I will install Heroku on my computer. But if you are on Windows operating system, you need to use one of this link based on your CPU architecture. After installing them, let's go for next step. The next step is running Heroku login in the terminal. Open a new terminal and inside that, after installing Heroku CLI, if you run Heroku login and press enter, you need to press enter again and then a new window in your Chrome browser will be opened and you need to click on login and after clicking on login you will get this message it says you can close this page close this page and then here you just logged in as a 
user based on the email that you just provided at the login time. Great, the next step. We need to create a application in Heraco. It's the command Heraco apps colon create. Uh, the name of app should be unique. And to make it unique, you can prefix your name as a part of app name. I'm going to set the name to JS Amazona, but you need a unique name, not this one. And then press enter. We just created an app at this address. If you keep control or command and click on it and click on open, you will get this message. It's an empty Huraco application. And what we're gonna do is to convert this simple page to this one. Let's go for it. The next step is gonna be edit package.json. In the root folder, not in the front end folder, open package.json. And in the script section, let's add some commands. First of all, I'm gonna get rid of test here. There is no need to that. And then, add this one Hiroko dash pre build and put a colon for pre build what I'm gonna do is to build the front end project cd front end put ampersand ampersand because we are gonna run multiple command in one line and then npm install dash dash diff so what it does is to install dev dependency inside frontend folder before building the project. The next command, Hiroko dash post build. It's gonna be run after running build command. First of all, we need to run build. npm run build. Second command, cd front end. And the third one, run npm install to install all packages inside frontend folder. And the last one is gonna be build the frontend project. Okay, that's great. Let's go for the next step. It's gonna be edit package.json for not engine. At the very bottom of this screen, we're gonna add a section for node engine. Uh, it's just for, you know, using the same version of node and npm to run our project. Engines equal to the version of node we're gonna use is 12.4.0 and the version of npm is 6.9.0. Let's go back to plan. It's time to create pros file. Click here and right click here new file and set file name to pros file. You know, there is no extension and only the first letter is capital and others are lowercase. Inside that, we're gonna put a command and this command is gonna be run after building the project on the Heraco server. Web colon and here is a command node space dist slash server.js and the reason we are going to run the server.js inside this folder is because of babel transpiler babel convert the code inside backend folder to es5 version and put them inside this folder and hiraco search for this slash server.js to run the es5 version of our project great the next step, we need to edit server.js for using port. Open server.js, but not in the dist folder, in the backend folder. Open it, and here we are using static port address. We need to convert that to the dynamic one. Let's do that. Instead of 500, use config.capital port. Save this file and then go to config.js and here use this port colon. We are gonna use process.env.port, but if it doesn't exist, use 5000 and put a comma there. Let's go for the next one. We need to create MongoDB Atlas database. As I said 
before you need to go to cloud.mongodb.com to create an account and after login you will be in this page after that you need to create a new user and save username and password somewhere click on database access and here click on add new database user and enter username here js amazon app and enter a password i'm gonna enter a simple password and then select the default one and click on add user what you need to do at this point is to create a new file and inside this new file you need to write down your username and your password here because we need that for the next step the next step is gonna be set network address in the cloud.mongodb.com you know at this page click on network address and here you need to add a record like this to do that simply click on add ip addresses and in this box what you need to do is to type this 0.0.0.0/0 and by having this you are accepting all requests from all servers to this mongodb database great after having this record, it's time to go for the next step. We need to create a new database. Let's go for it. Click on clusters and here select the clusters. I just have a sandbox here. And to create a new database, click on collections. After clicking on collection, you will be redirected to this page. In this page, click on create database and enter the name of the database. I'm gonna set the database name to JS Amazon app and enter the collection name to let's say test and click on create. So what you need to do is to click on JS Amazon app. It's the newly created database and copy the name of it and then go to the file that you just created for saving information about that and paste it right here so this one is db name this one is username and this one is password but you know you need to have the you need to have your real password that you just created at the previous steps by having this it's time to create a connection string to do that click on clusters Click on connect, select connect your application and click on copy. Then go back to that file, paste it right here like this. And here it's time to replace username, password and DB name. The DB name is this, cut it and paste it. You know, you need to get rid of angle brackets around DB name too, like this. Username should be this one paste it in the right place and the password should be the real password and paste it right here after doing this it's time to get rid of others and keep this address in a safe place what i suggest you is to copy this in your clipboard and use that for next steps the next step is gonna be setting mongodb connection url in the hiraco environment variable to do that use this command in the terminal hiraco config colon set mongodb underline url all capital equal sign and put double quotes and inside that paste the connection string from previous step right here and press enter by running this command you will set the mongodb address to this URL. After this step, you need to create .ignore file. What you need to do is to click here and at the very root folder, create a file and set the file name to .git ignore. It should be exactly like this. You know, this file doesn't have any name and there is only extension. .git ignore is the name of file and there should be a contents like this. Let's put this content in your project for the first one doesn't need. You need to have this part. It just ignore all dependencies 
from being part of your Git repository. Also, you need to have this part for testing and for production. And also the misc file is gonna be this part. We're not gonna put environment variable as a part of the Git repository. And also the last part is about npm and yarn extra files. By having .ignore file like this, in the git section of VS Code, you will have limited files here. And it's time to commit this file and push them on the Heroku server. Set the message to Heroku publish, and then click on this icon, commit. And by committing this, open your terminal and inside the terminal run this golden command git push heroku and when you press enter all files inside your local computer will be compressed and uh, upload to the heroku server and your server will be run some commands after building your project to make it ready for serving on the internet. This command, as you see, is the pre-build command because in the package.json, we have a Heroku pre-build. And after that, it's time to build the project and post-build. Great, it's time for post-build. And as you see, this command is exactly the one you have in the build command. And at the very end, it says the build was successful and it's just compressing and launching your project at this address. So if you press command click or control click in Windows and click on open, you will get this page. But you will see, but you will see it's stuck in loading. Open inspect and it's the error in the network section, select XHR and refresh. And here is the product. As you see, the address here is incorrect. We need to fix the address instead of localhost colon 5000, it should be the root address, this address. Let's fix this one, go to VS Code, open config.js in the src folder inside frontend, you know, don't mix it up with the config in the backend folder. You know, it's in the frontend folder, src config.js. We need to fix this API address because when it comes to serve that from Heroku, it shouldn't be localhost column 5000. What I'm gonna do to detect local instance of web application and the Heroku one is using document dot location dot href. If it start with localhost question mark, use this one. Otherwise use empty string. The empty string here means that just serve from the same address as the front end. Great. Let's push this changes. Click here, enter a message, fix URL and click here, open terminal run git push Heroku again and wait for building your project. After building, click again, open it, and this time you will have empty string. Let's add a new product. To add a new product, first of all, you need to create an admin account slash API, you know, at the end of the address, put a slash API slash users slash create admin and press enter. Great, you just created an admin user. You need to copy the email and password and then go to the root folder of project, click on sign in, paste the email and enter the password of admin user, click on sign in. Aha, uh -huh. it says secret or private key must have a value. So let's fix this issue. Go to your VS code, open terminal, and enter this command, Heroku config colon set JWT underline secret equal sign double quotes and inside that enter something secret and press enter. Great. By setting this environment variable, let's test again. Refresh 
enter your admin email and the password and click on sign in great we just logged in as an admin user click on dashboard and you will get an error for loading to fix this issue what we can do is to go to the product list and in this screen create a new product click on create new product and enter the information let's fit shirts enter the price select the default image folder set brand to nike con to 10 shirts and good shirts and good shirts as a description and click on update if you click on js amazona you will have the fit shirt here and if you click on it click add to cart and uh, select the number of product click proceed to check out enter an address click continue select paypal and place order you're gonna be redirected to the payment page but at this page you will get an error because you didn't set the paypal client id so what you need to do is to go to vs code and go to the and go to the dot env file and you need to create the paypal client id inside Hiraco web application so copy this and then run this command Hiraco config colon set paypal underline and put double quotes and inside that paste the client id and you just got in that lesson about payment gateway and press enter after restarting your Hiraco server it's time to refresh the payment page great you see paypal check out here and if you click on it you're gonna be redirected to the paypal payment screen to pay this order great i'm going to close this one because we are going to test the dashboard at the at this time click on dashboard this time dashboard works and there is no loading message anymore and in the order section you can get the order information and also in the product section you have all products and in the home screen you have one product here great that's it for this lesson what we did together in this lesson is to publish our web application from local host column 8080 to Hiraco cloud server at this address and throughout this course we created a database inside mongodb atlas cloud servers and published that on the huraco web server until next lessons bye bye in this lesson we're gonna have some fixes on the js amazona project to get the source code of fixes go to this repository click on commits and find run locally documentation here you will have all changes in the code and if you are ready let's apply fixes the first one is in the readme file i have added a new section and it's run locally and here it explains the steps that you need to follow to run this project on your computer. It's just about documentation. The next part, the next change in this lesson is in the order router. In line 50, we had, we had only orders in this line, but now we need to have a check if length of orders equal to zero we need to return this array and inside this array we return an object that contains num orders and total orders equal to zero if the length of orders is greater than zero we return the orders itself it prevents the error if you seed data without any order the next fix is in the package.json in the root folder. I mean here, not in the front end folder. What I did here is to fix the typo for the name of this folder. It's dist, not d. 
DEST. And also I have added this part to complete the build of project. It goes to the front end folder, run npm install and npm build there. And the last change in this lesson is in the order screen.js in line 76. What I did here is to use a condition to make sure that deliver order button exists. Because if the user is not an admin, there is no deliver order button and this code returns an error. By having this condition, there is no error anymore. That's it about this lesson, having some fixes on the project. Until next lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to implement search box in the header. First of all, open headers.js inside frontend src components open headers. Here we have brand and enter this HTML tags. It's gonna be a div. The class name is search. Inside that there is a form. The class is search-form and the ID is search-form. Inside that we have an input box. The name is Q, ID is Q and value is value. We need to define value at the very beginning. The value is coming from parse request URL right here. Define value equal to parse request URL. Let's import parse request URL from utils at the very beginning of this file, import it. And then let's go for the after render. Scroll down for the after render. We need to create an event for search form right here. For document that get element by ID for the form, define an event listener for the submit action. And inside that, what we're gonna define is preventing default for the event. So by having this, when user press enter in the search box, it's not gonna refresh the page. So we need to handle it by ourselves. And for the handle, we just get the keyword from the text box and then redirect user to this page. Slash question mark, query equal to the entered value in the text box. So the handle of search is gonna be in the home screen because we redirect user to the home screen. Save the file and let's go for styling search box. Open style.css, press control P, type style and scroll down at the very end, a section for search. For the search section, we need to add some styles. The first one is the search itself, set width to 1400. For the search input of type text, set width to 1800. And set borders like this. For the button, make the button like this. And for hover, change the button background color. And for the search bar after clear the flout. Save it and that's it. We successfully created a search box like this. It's very similar to Amazon. Let's enter fit here and press enter. What you see is this. A redirect user to Q equal to fit. But this page does not found. We need to go to the parse request URL and fix this issue. Open utils.js inside frontend src folder and update the parse request URL. What I'm gonna do is to get address in the first line like this, slice by one and split by question mark, get the first section and then get query string like this. If the hash part has a question mark, then the query string is gonna be the second part Otherwise, it's empty string. Then the URL here is coming from the address, not from document.location.hash. And we need to have resource 
So let's rename it to resource equal to URL dot split by slash and get the query from query string dot split by equal sign. At the end, what we need to return is very important. Instead of returning only resource ID and verb, get rid of it and return resource ID verb name and value. Name and value is this. I mean question mark equal to fit. As you see, this time if I enter something and click on search, you will not get page not found. You will be redirected to the home page, but the search does not apply. Here it shows all products, not only the products that contains fit in their name. Let's go for this one. Open home screen, get rid of extra import here. Get value in the render function from parse request URL import it from utils. So the value is the value that user entered here fit. So we need to pass it for getting products. So for get products function, pass the value as a keyword. What we need to do is to go to get products in the API and as a parameter for get products, pass this object, it contains search keyword and by default, it's empty. Inside the try part, define query string equal to question mark. And then, and then if search keyword exists, then query string is gonna be question mark plus search keyword equal to search keyword and ampersand. By having this, instead of having this URL, we're gonna have this one. So we concatenate it with question mark search keyword equal to the search keyword in the function parameter. Save it and let's check the result. Open DevTools, go to network section, select fetch XHR and enter, let's say, shirt and click on search button. Yes, here the URL is very important. It's products question mark search keyword equal to shirt and ampersand. So what I'm going to do here is to go to product router and read the keyword and use it to filter data. Open product router inside backend slash router for the get. Define search keyword inside this function like this. Search keyword is coming from rec.query.search keyword. And if it does exist, use this filter name equal to regular expression equal to the search keyword and, and the option is I. It means that it's not case sensitive. Save it and then use the keyword in the find like this. Let's check again. This time enter, let's say fit and click on search. Uh -huh. This time the result is one and in the dev tools, we only have one result because only this record contains fit in their name. Let's try shirt and click on search. Yes, the search works perfect. That's it about the implementation of search functionality for this e-commerce website. Let's review what we did. In the product router, we added search keyword and it get the search keyword using rec.query.search keyword. So if there is a value for search keyword in the query, we read it and based on it, we create this filter. What this filter does is searching in the name field for this keyword and the search is not case sensitive. So capital characters and small characters doesn't matter. In the style.css, we added style for the search like this. In the API, we updated the get product to read the query string and pass it to the backend. In utils.js, we updated the parse request URL to get the query string and also get the name of value for the query string because for search, we need it. In the headers.js, we created HTML tags to show search box. 
and also we implemented event listener for on submission for submitting for submission of search form it just redirect user to this page to home page and it passes the query string to the home page and in the home page we read the query string pass it to the get products function and show the result in the screen that's it about this lesson this video is product search bar and here i'm going to push it with this commit message click here and then push it to the github so you can get the source code of this lesson just go to the github repository of this project click on commits and then find video 45 product search bar here you will have all changes in this lesson In this lesson, we're gonna add hamburger menu to show a sidebar for e-commerce website. First of all, go to the frontend folder, src components, right click new file and create side.js. It's a new component that we are going to show a sidebar. Here, I'm going to define a side as an object. And in this object, we have render function like this. And inside the render function, we need to return a dev that shows a sidebar. We just return HTML. It has a dev like this. And inside the dev, we show this header shop by category, and then a button to close the sidebar. And another dev inside this dev, it's the body of sidebar. And here we show a list of categories. As you see, the list of categories here is static. So it just show shirts and pants. Let's go for the after render, right after render, put a comma and define after render like this. For after render, first of all, get a side container and remove open class because we don't want to show the sidebar by default. And then set an event listener for click button on the close sidebar and after clicking on that just remove open class to close the sidebar at the very end export a site great let's go for the next step it's in the index.js open index.js inside frontend slash src folder and find router function here we have header container and rendering headers Duplicate these three lines, copy and paste them, and then change header to side. Side here, here, and capital side. It's coming from where? From an SRC component side. It's the component that we just created right now. And then call after render on side. Also the name of it is a site so it's time to define a site container open index.html this time find header container this one and right after that put a site and set id to a site container and save it next step is gonna be in the header.js open header.js and we need to show hamburger button here to show that, find the brand here and right before the JS Amazon link, put this button. It's a button that its ID is a side open button. And I have used this ASCII code to show menu icon. I scroll down to set an event for this button. Right after this, create this function find site open button and for event click call this function it just open the sidebar for us it's time to add class open to the style open style.css and here create a section for a site the site itself has this class the position is fixed and the width is 30 rem also we use transform to hide it at first but when it gets the open class, 
we show it in the screen. Also for a side header, we use this class to use shop by category and close button in the same line. And also it's the class for close button. For categories, we are going to have these classes for LIs, anchor, make it flex, for a span, set the font size and color, and for hover, change the color, and for hover for the LI, change the background color. Save it. And the last class is for brand button. Make the font size big and change the color to white and also cursor to pointer. Save it. And inside index.html, change underline to dash and save it. And go to site.js, change it to dash to here. And also in header.js, change it to dash. And also for this one inside site.js. Here is the result. We have the menu here. If I click on it, as you see, it shows shop by category. I have shirt and pants. Let's get rid of bullet points here. Go to style.css and find categories li and set list style type to none. Uh -huh. Here is the result and let's get rid of padding here. Add this class ul.categories padding to zero. And here is the result. So if I click on pants, it shows only pants. And if I click on shirts, it just show only shirts. Also, you can make the data here dynamic by grouping categories of products and show the name of categories here. But for simplicity, I just show the static shirts and pants category here. That's it about implementing sidebar for the project. I push this code with this message on GitHub. And to get the source code of this lesson, go to Git repository of this project, click on commits and find show categories in the sidebar commit. Here you will have all changes in this lesson and you can compare it with your code to fix any issues. That's it about this lesson. Until next lesson. In this lesson, we're going to implement review for products. What we're going to do is to show list of reviews at the end of product page and create a form to enter review by customers. Let's go for it. The first step is in product screen, open product screen in front and src screens folder and scroll down here, create a div and close it. Here we are going to show reviews. First of all, enter h2 to show review title. Then use this condition. If review.length is equal to zero, then show there is no review. We need to create reviews in the model later and then create a UL and use map function to render list of reviews in the product.review array. And after that, create the last LI to create a form for review. After the join, press enter and implement this LI. H3, write a customer review, check user info.name if it does exist, show this form. This form contains rating as a select box, select poor, fair, good, very good and excellent, and a label and text area to get the comments from user. At the end, we have a submit button. And if the user does not exist, show this message, please sign in to write a review. Save it to format your code and let's go and get user info. I scroll up, import, get user info, and then go to the render function right before return, get user info. Get rid of .js here for local storage. And it's time to implement submit handler for review form. In the after render, first of all, we need to have a check. If review form exists, it means that user is logged in. And if it does exist, implement event handler for submission. Review form, 
add event listener for submit for show message import show message from rc slash util and import re-render to show the added review to the list here it's time to implement create review create review is going to be implemented in api.js right after create product let's implement create review function define this function it accepts product id and the review and then copy the content of create product and paste it here we are going to change them let's start by the url here the url should be like this slash api slash product product id reviews and at the last parameter set data to review if there is an error show the error message otherwise return the data that's it about create review for the api and we need to import it here press control space and select import from front end src api the next change is in product model open product model in backend slash model and it's time to create review schema right before the product schema define review schema like this the review has user that entered the review name of user the rating it's a number between zero to five and the comment it's a string we need to use it inside the product schema so as a last field define reviews it's an array of review schema this schema and save it great let's go and implement the product routes open product router.js and it's time to implement a new function to save the review at the very end define this function product router.post slash id review only authenticated user can have access to this and it returns express async handler inside this function first of all get the product using this code and then if product exists then create a review object using the data in the form body and also set the user and name of reviewer from the rec.user the current logged in user then push review to the list of reviews and it's time to update rating and num reviews i'm using reduce function on the review and it calculates the sum of all reviews and divide it by the number of reviews to create the average review by users and the num reviews is coming from the length of reviews in the reviews array after that save it and send this message if there is an error return error message save the file and it's time to go for the styling open style.css at the very end create a section for review here is the review get rid of bullet points and create margin inside product screen.js and here for the form what i'm gonna do is to create a dev above the form and for the dev cut the form container from here and paste it here and for the ul set class to form items and after the form we need to close it after the form close the opening def also in the style.css scroll up to find input and button and add select and text area go to product screen find write the customer review here and move it right here create li enter it here and close the li also for the dev here set class to content and save it aha uh -huh. there is a padding around the review and it's much better let's test it select review excellent and enter test and click on submit it says review added successfully nice admin added this review in this state and here is the message also as you see it applied to the review too let's go to another product 
scroll down, select good, three, and test two, and click on submit. Uh -huh, three stars, and also here is three stars two. Very good, we successfully implemented review for the products. I commit this code with this message and push it to GitHub. To get the source code of this lesson, visit this link, click on commits, and find video review products to get all changes in this lesson.